Okay, welcome everybody. Braden CRA meeting, uh, Wednesday, May 25th. Uh, it's uh, 1 16 p.m. Um, meeting called to order. Citizens comments not on the agenda. I have one card before me and Annie Rossini from the Village of the Arts. It's, it's not on the agenda, is it? It's guild, guild funds for Warren Center? That's not on our... I believe it's part of the presentation that oh, okay. the guild, the funding request. All right, I stand corrected on that. Okay, well, let's... Uh, we have the consent agenda, which is the minutes from the March 9, 2002 special meeting. Looking for a motion. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Do I have two minutes here? Um, okay, I'm going to double copy. All right, 14th Street CRA. Uh, no, that's we're going to wait on that. Bradenton CRA, event proposal for Main Street Live, FYI 22-23. Um, we, uh, and the reason, uh, we're going to come back to the 14th Street CRA item, uh, but it will be uh, discussed after 2 p.m. when the representative is able to be here. So we're just moving the agenda a little bit. Um, so uh, towards the end of last week, I received a proposal for a funding request for events in our downtown called Main Street Live. It's um, it's for a series of events that will take, and it's for budgeting for next fiscal year. And here with us today um, to, to make the presentation is Morgan Bates Angel of Independent Jones and her partner, Antonio. Hi. Hi. Um, so I don't know, did they get a copy of the proposal? They have, do you want one for you? Or Great, no, I have it right here. Okay, awesome. So, hi, my name is Morgan. I am a co-owner of Independent Jones. We have, um, previously I was with John Ed at Realize Bradenton, so I'm very familiar with the city of Bradenton, have a long relationship. And um, what we're proposing today is restart the series that is a public event um, in the evening that's called Main Street Live. It was rebranded about two years ago. It was previously Get Down Downtown. And um, historically, this event was put on by the old Main Street merchants but that association is dissolving and it's kind of unknown right now who's gonna pick it up and so that's kind of why we've stepped forward. Um, previously in the past we have executed, planned, done all of this event for the Old Main Street merchants so we're familiar with everything it takes. Um, and so that's the proposal. Uh, we selected six dates with the Old Main Street merchants and they do fall around kind of holidays, um, sticking mostly to Saturdays but also dates that we've done in the past so that we'll get some recognition. Um, and you'll see the dates there. One's October, next one's in November, then December, which is obviously New Year's Eve. And uh, February, we would tailor it around regatta. And then March, St. Patty's Day, and April to close the season, just with a spring event. Um, and so what we did in taking this over is we tried to, A, think about how we could reduce costs with still delivering something of quality and effectiveness that will contribute essentially to the downtown's growth. Um, and so what we propose is a partnership with the Bradenton CRA for funding for the base needs on what we call overhead expenses of the event, like portalets, security, um, uh, signage, things like that. And then we, Independent Jones, we listed out all the things that it kind of takes, just a rough outline, so you'd see what the, um, all we would be doing. And then on the what is it, third page, um, so we would propose this event has never really had a full branding, a whole look, a whole facelift. And so what we would propose is to rebrand it in partnership with the Bradenton CRA. So we'd take up those colors, pick some fonts, we'd do um, uh, poster, graphics, branding, all that, promote it, push it out. Um, and then again, with these goals. So we'd raise the quality of vendors. We look at bringing in some commercial booths, which is businesses, instead of, say, just jewelry. It would be um, real estate, chiropractors, things like that, more reputable businesses in this area that are just maybe more established. Um, and then pepper that in so then we can still keep booth rates cheap for like the small businesses that are doing like jewelry or handmade goods or a, a handmade snack um, under cottage law, something like that. Um, and so that would be instituting commercial booths. 
And then we do look to sell sponsorships. So while we are asking for funding, we do acknowledge that we want to make this event <coughs> self-sustaining. And so we would try and go out and raise sponsors. And in the past, we have raised about between two and 5,000, typically. Um, but those that is money spread out throughout each event. So when we do six, you have to think of those costs times six. So um, we would do that, and we propose a 50-50 split with the CRA so that they could start to recoup some of their money that they are investing in this series. Um, and then what we are familiar with, my company, we do events throughout this whole area. We actually were just awarded the Venice Farmers Market. We do the Brainton Market, the Lakewood Ranch Market. Um, we book the entertainment for Music on Main. We do Ranch Night Wednesdays. So we're very familiar with the logistics that go behind a large street event like this. Um, so we do feel we're very qualified. But what we do in um, kind of summing up these events is we do submit final closings for each event. So with each event ending, we would have a full receipt um, a full invoice for what we paid, what we spent, what we have going into the next, um, so that you could see that we are gaining traction instead of just spending everything that we have, you know, right out of the gate. But um, what we've kind of come up with is that 6,000 number, and that allows us, again, to spend on the entertainment. What I really would like is a little bit more, which is why we said six, to spend a little more on the bands, um, because we, we would just love to raise the quality of entertainment, which I think will raise the quality of the street. Um, and so that's kind of our goal going into it, <coughs> just increase the vitality of the downtown area and the businesses in this, and do it as a service, because the Main Street merchants right now, they need the business, but they don't have the time to do all that we do. So that's kind of it, if you have any questions. Okay, um, up here, Ms. Barbie, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, pardon me, I'm sorry. Welcome. Thank you. Looking at the partnership and talking about the production, uh, the sage, stage, sound, lighting, sound text, that sort of thing. Do you all own your own stage and light system? No, we contract all that out. And all of those, I will note, are Brainton businesses in the Manatee County. But those are businesses that we've used for a long time. But as we know, expenses for them have gone up, so the rates have increased some. But um, through that six, we're paying out you know, off-duty police, the stage company. The stage company brings the lighting. Um, you know, it does, it, the money all stays in this county, which is kind of cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah that, uh, now I, I was under the impression that there was a whole group that was working to start to establish this. Are, is this different from the other group or are you working with them as well? We're not quite working because I don't think that group's quite established just yet. But I am close talks with Polly every step of the way, who was the past president of the Old Main Street. And Polly's in direct talk with that group that is forming. The reason that we didn't include that was because they're not formed quite yet. They don't know what they're going to be exactly. So at this point, to get it going, we just thought it easiest to leave out. But yes, that is the same group. OK, so our, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Can I ask? Okay, continue. OK, so. Um, these events will start in October. So is this really more pre-budget talking or are we automatically giving them the, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like we totally know yet. Um, I mean, I'm all for, is this just like a pre-budget talk or it, it looks like you're looking for? 36 grand. Well, th th my process is as the requests come um, to make sure we get a complete package out to you. So when, um, uh, Mrs. Bates Angel brought it forward. Um, that was the question whether there's going to be other partners. At this point in time, that group has not been established. There's been one meeting, but nothing official. So she uh, she kind of wanted to get started, you know, as as it takes time to get sponsors. So she she asked that she's part of this well, the meeting, main, the main but it is a pre-budget. This this will be that I need to budget for that money for next yeah. year. Um, okay, I just, I'm just wanting to make sure that we're not going to have another group that's going to say, well, now we're going to do events on different days. You see what I'm saying? And that's, I mean, I'm fine with earmarking this much money for, you know, events, <clears throat> but I, I, I want to make sure that, I, 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 I want to make sure that we're going to elevate, like you said, uh, the, I feel the very strongly that we need to elevate this event. And um, I think the music selection is going to be a lot of it. So I'm glad you are asking for enough to get um, mm -hmm. quality music. I think we need variety. Yep. And um, so I just, uh, you know, I'm just curious. 
I, I'm just curious about how this is structured. That's all. Well, this would be just a partnership like we've done in the past with Realize Bradenton or oh, with... Oh, I understand that, but I also oh. know that there's this other group out oh. there. So I, 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 that's all I'm concerned about is that, you know, are we just negating the other group then now? Or are they going to all work together? Um, well, that's, what, that's the questions that I have, you know, as far as we aren't totally... We don't, because we don't know what bands we're talking about or, or, you know, there aren't that many specifics in here. I'm fine with saying, yeah, let's budget $36,000 for these events. I just, I'm just, ex I'm, I don't know. From a planning, we just haven't booked anything or solidified because we don't know yeah. if it's for sure. Mm -hmm. But if it was something that we should come back, if we have a good faith note or you know to go and do these then we could put forth the exact details of it you know a exact uh, street map how many exact vendors uh, bands that we would book um we can I, do that i just i liked that they were incorporating a lot of different they were bringing in the young professionals mm -hmm. they were bringing in some corporate people mm -hmm. and i i just want to make sure that we aren't negating that i want to i'd like to see them all together totally and that was still us for the last like three Pre-COVID, that was all us for the last, since it went Main Street Live. So those same sponsors, like, um, I think it's Hamlin and Hamlin, or, I mean, there's a law group down here, they'll resign, um, Mad Marks re resign. So we have some sponsors that will just kind of dust off, and they'll probably rejoin us. Uh, Mr. Sanders? Uh, I think you have. I, yeah, just wanted to ask this. I, there's another group out there that's, was maybe once more e efficient or effective and then they disband and now they're loosely coming back what's why are we why are we worried about mm -hmm. um, you know helping this group if the other group hasn't even formed itself Mr. Chairman I mean at, at one point know? the downtown I need the history <laughs> It started with the Downtown Business Owners Association and right. then morphed Heard into the Old Main Street mm -hmm. Merchants. Heard of that. And because of COVID and a few other things, the Main Street Merchants, as far as I am being told, they are talking about getting something put together, but they haven't done it yet. And, you know, we have a proposal in front of us by a known entity that um, has has put together some pretty wonderful events and it may be that that they end up partnering with this group as well but i would say it's gonna it would take if we try to wait for them to get together we might be waiting a long time just because of the nature of the beast and timing is of the essence for something going on in october well, and the point of, um, so prior to the Main Street Merchants, I know when I came on board, the Downtown Progress was doing this, uh, which was a group of independent businessmen, um, and then the merchants had to take it over, so we're kind of evolving on this, so I think it's good. I think you should work with our director on uh, tightening this up. <coughs> Ms. Sanders? Yeah, I, I agree with everything everybody said um, and you have been working with downtown merchants in the past to do this right Please. so so they they put pulled their money they did the beer sales and that kind of stuff which which yep. is where the real money is and that you you did that and so that this came about you know I'm very familiar with it and so uh, New Year's Eve was uh, they weren't they weren't organized in order to do it and and they weren't supporting the cost and then, of course, they came, a local owner came to the council and the CRA and asked for five or 10,000. So we approved that. <clears throat> and I was for that because, you know, we've had a New Year's Eve party in downtown Braden for 20 years, I think. So, um, and they, they put it together, but they had told me that they were going to organize again. I don't know where they're at. I would ask our, our director to reach out to them so this is in harmony. We don't want to uh, do something they might be offended by 
and that they should be they should have some skin in this game with some money because the beer sales and, and other things they will get because you don't get any Correct. of that or a percentage and so it's good for the communities that i uh, great i'd like to have better entertainment uh you know regional more in it regional and so uh even if you say hey i can get x you know ban you could come back to us and see if we could help with that so that you're not just restricted six thousand dollars i don't know it i'm, I'm not been in this market for a long time so i don't know what that can get but t typically you've got the the bands that come through the area and they may be in venice or they may be in st pete uh, a day before and you sometimes you can call them up their manager and say hey mm -hmm. how much does it take for you to come on down <coughs> another day and it's a lot cheaper than than that so you can tag on to that that's mm -hmm. that's how it works and you might be able to come back to, to the, the director and say hey we can get this band it's they're known all over the country and the only reason we're getting them because they're up in Clearwater yep. so you know how it works yep. uh, so I would say say yes I would I'm 100% for this I would appropriate it but I'd ask the, the CRA directors to reach out to Main Street merchants make sure they're on board because we don't want to have any conflict that well you went around It's the, the power surge. Um, no, it just stopped. We need to record it too. It, it just stopped. Another leak. A leak? Like, you know, the gas leak all over. Oh. <laughs> Somebody. Is anybody putting a fiber optic cable around this building right <laughs> now? No, they're still working. I just the went sub by that. Contractor of the subcontractor. <laughs> they got more equipment on the ground. You ready? Okay. I'm frozen. Hold on one sec, please. <laughs> okay, I'm not. You may want to explain what happened. You want to take a five minute break? It's probably going to take her a while to bring it up. The recording has stopped. Oops, I have to restart my computer. You have to restart. Mr. Chairman, just so everyone's aware, we don't have to have an audio recording of the meeting in order to proceed. <clears throat> From a legal standpoint, if if the board wants to have the audio, that's fine. But okay, but we do have to have a recorder to take the minutes. And, that, and, and is, are, is she's functioning now? She can I'm, take minutes. Right, right but um, uh, your, your computer's working. <clears throat> I think so. Just well, let's check and make sure. Please. Right. <laughs> That is mandatory, am I right? Minutes. minutes. The minutes are mandatory. She's yes. a stenographer of the minutes. Do you want to wait for Ms. Tyree? Um, no, we'll just keep going. Um, okay, so for the viewing public, uh, we just had a power surge. We're up and running. It's uh, 135. Um, my last comments on this, I like the fact that you um, moved the hours from 6 to 9. My observation was around 10 o'clock is when people start getting a little tipsy, so I think it's a really good move. I'd rather have that. Yep, on, have on someone else's clock. <laughs> oh, maybe you should start at 5 o'clock. It's always 5 o'clock in Brady. <laughs> 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 
Um, yeah. I, right. I was almost finished when, before the, the parachute interruption, but I just to finish was that, uh, yes, I'm agree with this. I think it needs to be done. I think there needs to be a little more tweaking with the, the executive director and give her authority to do that, maybe even with selection of the bands or whatever, but that's, uh, that's totally based on probably price. And all I want to say is uh, um, we're going to have other uh, areas in the city, like the Village of the Arts, that may want this same thing, so we need to be cognizant of that and not to conflict if they're having something over there that goes <coughs> to this, we don't want to get accused of that while you gave money to them and now that complex. So we had to be cognizant of that. And we got a new business district that I think is going to be coming up to speed here pretty soon over in my area uh, and in the old manatee. And I think that we need to support that as well. So could we, could we, we don't want to be confused with or accused not confused, but it could be confusing, uh, accused of supporting one area downtown, because we get accused of that a lot, that we put too much money into the downtown area and the villages is not getting the money. And, and, and now we've got a new business district, which they're forming, as I'm, I've been told, they're forming a new group uh, for promotion of that area. Awesome. Devin. Are you looking for a motion on this today? Yes, if, if you would like to approve this. I'd be comfortable with um, approving this, um, but I would like it to be stipulated in there that you will work with the downtown merchants and, and everybody that. Absolutely. I just, that's my only concern is that we're, you know, cutting anybody off. That's agree, yes, I agree, I agree. Okay, okay, so I'll move to approve um, the event proposal. It, do you want any amount of 36,000? There was some discussion if you, uh, and, and I don't know if this is one person or if the board, if there is a, the opportunity to have better quality, do you want me to give me the, you know, up to, you know, instead of six, can like potentially up to 10 only in events where the, I it would make a difference? I don't think 6,000 seems like enough per event if we really it, want better it depends music. depends on the entertainment. Yeah, it yeah. Really does. I really, I really, okay, I, I so. I would be willing to give you discretion and, and up, to 10, up to ten thousand. Up to ten thousand, maybe. Yeah, per at event. six, and then the additional four, if needed, to yeah. go towards the. Now this is a fifty-fifty split, right? So. No. No, the uh, split is we're gonna separate from 10, that. We're going to put out six thousand, regardless. Correct. So, so, um, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have a matching if there's if thirty-six thousand. No. You're gonna you're not gonna have half of that or whatever. No, we're gonna spend that on the services and the event, but then the sponsorships that we raise on top will be 50-50. Be 50-50. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anything we raise on top of that okay. for the event, we'll split. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm just going to say it. I mean, do we really want to take that money back? I mean, I. why take the money back? We're, they're doing what we want them. Put it into better entertainment. It, if they can get, if they can get, and I, I've talked with them, and I know they're talking to big sponsors, big Big sponsors, I think it needs to be and a and up. they want to try to come bring some regional acts in. Exactly. And, and so I, I just, I mean, it's up to you guys, but I feel like the purpose of spending this money is to get a quality event, and if your incentive is to, I just don't know about the having to give back fifty percent. Uh, I don't think that I, I, I misunderstood. I don't think that that's you know, oh you mean give back fifty percent of their sponsorship. Well, that was what you proposed. Mm -hmm. We didn't propose that. So you're willing to do that. So I, I'll take it. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, okay. you're, I, I've been on your side as a promoter, and well, promoters I know. don't I, give up money that easily. Well, I just feel like I'd rather see it be a super success than, than put money I back. If, if well, but a if major band was coming through here, we could get a pretty fast special meeting to make sure they stop by and see us. Yeah, but if, you know, ABC Business gives them $5,000, I'd rather them use that $5,000 to up it than say, okay, we got $25,000 and $25,000 is going back to the <coughs> okay, yeah. If they were using it for the entertainment, not just- Entertainment or just, just whatever it takes to get a nicer event. Yep. Inter uh, That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that if, if you're, we. You can have you can have that fifty percent of the sponsorship, but it has to go to the entertainment yeah, only, not definitely. to operating expenses yep. or, or profit of your. Uh, okay. Promoter. No, we all want the same thing. Y'all want the same. Better nightlife yeah. downtown. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I agree with that. So let's do a motion. Okay. 
Okay, okay then we'll say. Put all that in the motion. But I agree well, with I think I'm going to make my motion to do six thousand per event, okay. up uh, up to ten thousand without any return to the CRA. Am I okay? No. No, no, it's it's your motion, whatever you want. Well, um, I'm just trying. I to think follow. now that we gave up the 50%, income, we don't then need the ten thousand. I, I, I would recommend to say like up that. to the six thousand without the fifty percent, um, and then I would still request that you still give us uh, an update after each event with kind of how it went and a, a report after each event. I think that's super fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a, a one-on thing with each entertainments you know because yeah there, there might be opportunities out there that hey 12,000 will get this do you really want that and and I'd like to have some discretion you to have some discretion to do that versus having another meeting and the 6,000 to be for hard costs okay Correct. so my motion is <laughs> <laughs> help me out with this motion to approve up to six thousand dollars to go towards the main street live events as presented yes. in the package yes um with uh, i and the payout will be after receiving the reimbursement of the for the hard costs got that yep, yep. yes Good. and there will be no return of the Sponsorship. sponsorships of above and you will work with the downtown merchants organization okay and I your second. second okay that's a motion and a second all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed scott was i legal <laughs> <laughs> i think that was fine yes thank you everybody thank you very much thank okay. you okay go do good uh moving on all cra's resolution cra 22-04 appoint laura mckeithen to the public art advisory board um, uh, Mrs. Farmer is going to make the presentation for this agenda item. Good afternoon. All right. So um, today um, we bring before you resolution CRA 2204 for the approval to appoint Laura McKeithen to the Public Art Advisory Board. And so Laura is a realtor from Boyd Realty and she's been engaged um, in our community for over 35 years. She comes to us with a wealth of experience in community outreach and volunteer management, and we look forward to having her on our team. So I'd like to invite you up to say a few words. <laughs> well, I just wanna say thank you for this opportunity. As you all know, the arts and culture in our downtown Bradenton is my heart, my love. And it's a great honor to serve on this board, and I'm really excited to be part of it. So, thank you. Okay. Um. All right. So, so we need a motion, a second. I'll make the motion to appoint Laura McKeithen to the Public Art Advisory Board. Second. That's a motion, second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Thank you. And now for an update. Thank you, board. All right, so can we go to the next agenda item now? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, the next agenda item um, is um, my update. So one of the things I wanted to tell you is that Riverview 6 is a affordable housing apartment complex coming into our community, and they have reached out to us. HTG is their developer, and um, they'd like the Public Art Advisory Board to help with support and advice on um, a public art that they would like to put on the property. So um, then also we are gonna help them with the call for artists in a couple of weeks. So that's getting ready to happen. So it's pretty exciting. Wanna let you know about that. And I also wanted to talk to you about the fact that the police substation is getting ready to be demolished soon. And we have a piece of public art on that property that's been there for 10 years. It's called See You When You Return. And it is, um, by Michael Parker. This piece of art is 24 feet by 100 feet, and it is made of aluminum panels that are removable. And the thing about that piece of art is that when I heard the story, when I read the story on the website of Michael Parker's that has the piece on there, it talked about how this piece of art, it's actually a community 
um, piece. It was actually done with you know several community members, and actually Jane, mm -hmm. you were on that, so so she knows this piece <laughs> well. Um, the part that I liked about it was it talked about the, the group that was working on this. There was a group of adults that were transplants there. They loved being the small town feel of Bradenton and yet um, having the urban, you know, amenities. And then the youth felt like they, there wasn't anything here for them. This was 10 years ago and they're um, wanting to leave. So through this whole conversation and all of, you know, all of the input from the community, um, they made this piece of art based on, on these sentiments. And it's called See You and Re You Return because they're hoping that these students that were there are going to go out, have different culture experiences, and come back to us. So, so that's the story of this piece of art. So um, the deaccession of a piece of art is never something to take lightly because this is part of our public art, um, our collection. So um, now we look to you guys to hear what you want us to do with this piece. Uh, when I talked to Jim McClellan, I think we can possibly put it in um, storage somewhere. If, if he can't find storage, um, I did speak with Michael Parker and he would take it back. So I've looked at our contract to see you know, what all we need to do to make this happen. We tried to um, see if the city, the county, um, schools, the Manatee County schools would um, have a place for it. They could not find a place. But just thinking of, you know, the fact that we're getting up, you know, some more um, development coming, we don't know if there could be somewhere, and even if it was just a part of it. But, you know, I just think just, you know, giving it back to the artist might be, you know, it might need some thought. So that's what um, I'm bringing up to you today. Do we want to discuss that? The one, the one issue you had too is trying to find a wall big enough. Right, Turn 24 by 100. So, I got a question. 25 feet by 100 feet. Um, Do you have all the pieces? Yes. yes. Okay. It was I, damaged was in the hurricane, yeah. and they replaced it. Okay. Because it's, it is. That's yeah. what's nice about that piece. Yeah. Six foot. Yeah. So we reached. Uh, so uh, Mrs. Farmer reached out to the school board um, and the contact. Uh, said that they didn't have anything large enough to accommodate it. We reached out to Public Works because they do have some facilities that are large enough, but they were still small. They couldn't fit the whole piece. Um, we reached out to the Public Art Advisory Board if they would could identify another place where we could put it. We haven't heard anything back from them yet. So as kind of a last resort before, we just wanted to bring it to your attention if you can think of anywhere that it could go. And it doesn't have to be decided today, but I think <laughs> soon we... I know that, that we need to get it off of the building, though. Right. Um, I, I, I would like to see us remove it from the building and hold on to it, just right. because we can't come up with a facility to put it on right this minute doesn't mean that there won't be one. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were so many people that came out to help paint each the of kids. those panels. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and Mark and I were there. My niece Emily was there. Um, there, were, there, there was a lot of people, you yeah. know. So I would like to, like to have us hold on to it until we can, can come up with a viable option or plan for it. Uh, everyone in agreement? I am. I have co <clears throat> oh. Comment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I knew about this about a year ago. Man, it's hard to find a place that's big enough to put that on. Uh, l let me ask the consensus of the, the board here. Should it remain in that ward, ward three, or in that district? Is that is that a requirement that it stay there? Or are we looking for just any place to put this? And have we reached out to the villages if they would like to, uh, if we have to piece it up, and I don't recommend that, but is there anything we can do with the property we bought uh, just recently or the property across the street to take those panels and make it like a fence out of it? It's just an idea. Make a fence out of it so that they can remove it, put it up, put it up, and then 
it, so that you'd just be moving it up to a fence that's easy to take down versus storing it. That, that's just a suggestion. I think that thing's like 30 feet it's, tall. No, it? it's like 25. Uh, it's 25 feet tall. tall. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Section. I, I understand that. I've, I went out and walked it. It's 100 feet long and about you know, whatever tall. It's huge. But it could be a, like a, a, a fence or a post thing if you burnt. I'm afraid it got back to damage the storage. Mm. Was it, did it come out of ACRA? Yeah, it came out of 14th Street, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So it should stay. I mean, I don't know. It, I've looked. I've driven around and looked for places for it to go, and it's so it's big. It's too bad, man. A T high. I, I, okay. Well, then it pretty pretty much needs to stay in the 14th Street CRA yeah. for now. So do you wish us to find storage for it temporarily, and then we can figure out in the future? I think. I mean. There was a lot of public input and a lot of public sweat equity that went into that. I don't think it should be discarded, but sitting here right this minute right now, I'm not, I, I don't feel comfortable saying, well, can't we talk to so-and-so about having them put it up? I think that it's something that is going to take a little bit of thought and a little bit of information. But in the meantime, it needs to come off the building so we can, fin we can figure out what we're doing over there. Has anybody talked to Performing Arts Center? because they've got that yes. big backside. I, I remember when we were siding, <laughs> and the hospital was another one, but I, they might not like it, I don't know. Okay, well I. But that's different CRAs. It's a different CRA. Well, let's just say for the time being, um, we'll put it in storage. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, they, they, what would do, is it, do we know when it's scheduled the demo there? No, but it will be this fiscal year. So we just wanted, again, today wasn't right. for you to make a, a big decision. It was just to start thinking about it. And, put, I mean, as potentially other places, maybe in other CRAs, let's look at the opportunity legally. Can we, can it be donated from the 14th Street CRA to the Braden? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out for us to consider looking at different options, um, if there are other places to be put. Okay, so. Well, and it, it could be that maybe if, if we find a place that isn't in the 14th Street CRA, then what it, whatever CRA area it ends up in reimburses the 14th Street CRA for the cost. Right. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Okay. All right, so I, I want to just let you know that our next meeting is going to be next Tuesday at 8.30, and it's going to be at the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature. Nice. So okay. in the conference room with the manatees. <laughs> and then next on the, I wanted to let you know that the Public Art Advisory Board had a special meeting on May 6th, and that was to go visit the Riverside, Riverwalk East expansion. And we, we heard from Jean Lammy, the Executive Director of um, Reflections of Manatee, got some history about the site, and then um, Public Works um, Director Jim McClellan took us to see you know where different pieces of uh, like the the circle that's going to be reflections of you know a reflection area and then where the mineral spring was and where the pump is going to be and um, and then where there is electric that's been put up for um, a sculpture so um, so that helped us a lot and we're going to discuss that a lot on um, Tuesday so we can move from there right on to um, um, C, um, number six, C on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So um, Katarina and I reached out to each of you to find out what some of your ideas were for this Riverwalk East. And many of you mentioned that you'd like to see more than just one sculpture. So um, I got some, um, Jim McClellan gave me um, the final master plan and in it, it had some art nodes mentioned in it. And the, some that it mentioned here were Branch Fort, Grist, Grist Sawmill, Angola, Mineral Spring, Nature, and Settlement Patterns. So now we'd just like to hear your input on um, the public art for the Riverwalk East expansion. Okay. Yes, Pam. Um, are we seeking out any um, experts on art to represent like like the Angola 
uh, community because they know so much about it? Are we still seeking out people like that because there's some uh, USF professors and and um, some other people with that eye or ideas of creativity okay. that maybe we should seek out and they could help okay. with you know and I'm just thinking of that particular thing because when it was excavated that area was excavated they were instrumental uh, in that process and probably could come up with something that would be meaningful and and substantially represent that community as opposed to just a one of the things Jean Lammy said she would do is um, reach out to um, artisans in the Red Hook area of the Bahamas so mm -hmm. that's um, his you know ancestors from from this area so so she did say she would do that oh okay and I may have some names too okay great to give. I'd love that thanks Pam yeah, um, I think anytime you go with something natural, it's okay. fit, it fit in there. I mean, that's what we're. The whole area is to to kind of draw the river and the park back in. Right. I. You know, when when you think of the river, there's. Uh, in other cultures, there's the spiritual aspect of the Manatee River being a singing river. So I would like to see maybe one of the, the pieces of art, if it could incorporate water and incorporate the ability to make pleasing sounds. Cool. Okay. Thank Calming you. sounds. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I saw an art piece one time and I, I don't know where it was from, but the way the tides would, the, the, love, the water levels affected the sounds that would come, and it was like big pipes, almost like a pipe organ, and depending on the different, I mean, it just it was a really cool. I'm sure it's very expensive, but <laughs> um, have you ever seen it? I know you, you guys travel so much. Well, we, Someone shared, shared it with me one time, and I was like, wow. <laughs> well, and again, um, when I was in Tennessee and, and at another um, historical, pretty much private park that had been set up by this gentleman, and, and he's, I said, you know, asked me where I was from, and I said, I'm from Braden, and he said, oh, you have a singing river there too. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there is a cultural and and historical and spiritual aspect of rivers having the ability to speak to you, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Okay. Great input. Anything else? All right. All right. That's Great. all I have. Okay. Moving right along, um, CRA community policing update. Um, I don't, I don't see anybody from the police department, but um, so we can probably skip that. But I, I, and I apologize for not doing it earlier. Between the power surge and everything, I, I was thrown off. I, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome the newest addition to our team. Um, Chris Mignon is our new CRA manager. Um, this is his third day, so. Um, Chris has extensive experience in commercial real estate, um, and he has a, a, approximately five years of experience in government. He, uh, he used to work in, uh, in the economic development for Manatee County. He also has worked in Sarasota County. So he, I, I love the fact that he understands both the private and the government sector and um, also his experience in economic development and contracts I think will be a great addition to our team. So I just, um, I'm very glad you're part of our team, Chris, and uh, we're excited to have you and look forward to working with you. So welcome aboard. Thank you, Katerina. I appreciate that, board members, uh, you know. It's exciting for me to be here with you guys. I'm, you know, really appreciative of the opportunity to work with you guys and the public and everything on these CRA projects. Um, 
I come with some some experience in government, um, being with Manatee County and Sarasota, as Katarina said. And uh, we, you know, in the short time, I've met a few of you, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you further as we go forward. Um, in, in the short time, we've had some, you know, conversations as a team, and uh, I feel I'm a really good fit with the team. Um, our skill sets and our um, experiences complement each other very much. So I am excited to get started. You know, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve the citizens of Bradenton, uh, the city of Bradenton, and um, hopefully we can work together to make life a little bit better for our citizens. And uh, thank you very much for uh, bringing me on. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, board. welcome. welcome. Okay. Just one, two, three. Um, when we and I can and I request that we take out off the agenda item six uh, E. I spoke to Chief Bevan, and we need to have further discussions about this item. So we are, we will be bringing it forward to you on June fifteenth. Okay. Want to move down to funding request for Sufo signs which we heard about in our previous meeting. Um, chair, um, Chairman, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Debbie McDermott is here from the Village of, of the Arts. So I just wanted, um, oh. instead of, um, okay. I wanted to see if we can go back to item yes. 4, 4 a to talk about their funding request. Okay, moving backwards. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Katarina. Thank you for the help. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Andrew couldn't, the president uh, couldn't make it, so she's here on his stead. Yeah. Can you let me know how this works or how to make it go? Because I do have some things I want to put up as we... Yes. Okay. <laughs> I printed everything to be safe. I figured it would probably work. So you just have pieces. I've got paper that I'll put up kind of as we're moving through, so... So what I'll do is Okay, thank you. While you're working on that. Um, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Debbie McDermott, and I'm here to talk on behalf of the Otter Guild of Manatee in Andrew's absence, like Katarina said. Um, he's going to be fine. Everything's good, and he'll be back soon. Uh, but thank you all for letting us speak here again. Uh, I want to pick up where he left off at the last meeting and share our vision uh, for the Welcome Center that he was talking about and some of the work that we've done toward that and paint a picture of our broader vision of Village of the Arts and its place in Bradenton. Uh, before I do that, to add some perspective, I want to share just a little bit about myself. Uh, so I grew up on Anna Maria, went to high school at Manatee High, uh, went away to college and came back after four years to be closer to my mom. I've worked in the banking uh, community here since 2004 in both Manatee and Sarasota counties and recently have been becoming more and more involved uh, in the community. The very first time I ever heard of Village of the Arts was, I believe, in late 2016. Um, I was introduced to it by a uh, board member at that time. Uh, initially, I joined as a member and subsequently stepped onto the board to fill an empty secretary role and stayed there for four and a half years until our elections last month. The point of this story uh, is that even though I grew up here, I was unaware of this amazing and unique art community. And once I learned more, I fell in love with the village, the members, the artists, the business owners, and I believe some of you share my affinity for them. I see all of the potential, and I'm very proud of the progress that they've made since the Artist Guild was formed in 1999. Uh, the board and I view the Village of the Arts as the beating heart of the arts community in Bradenton and a major feature of the downtown corridor. The Guild realizes that the next step to make this vision uh, happen is attract more artists, businesses, and visitors to the Village, and we see having a physical presence in the Village as being critical to that goal. With that in mind, uh, we're working on a community welcome center. Let's see if I can make this work. I'm going to put it the other way. Face up. No, face up. Thank you. And then let me know that way. Yeah. Okay. How's that looking, guys? Good. You can mostly see it. All right, we'll go with that. Um, so <laughs> with that in mind, we're working toward a welcome center, but it would be more. Uh, we want a central gathering place for meetings, classes, and events. Uh, it would act as an information center during art walks. Uh, we would house maps and supplies, store and sell Village of the Arts merchandise, display local artwork, and help welcome new residents. This would give the village additional visibility for residents and visitors, 
with regular operating hours and a presence at events. This would also allow the Guild the ability to hire and house staff to help with marketing needs, administrative tasks, community outreach, fundraising, event planning, educational outreach, and volunteer efforts, which we will be, believe will make a big difference in the organization and capabilities of the Guild by gradually moving from an all-volunteer organization to a mix of paid positions and volunteer support. We would like to utilize the Welcome Center to address one of the largest complaints we see from our visitors, um, having regular hours throughout the village. We would offer more uh, value and support to our merchant members, including free classes and training around social media usage and targeted ads, as well as business development in general, to help them expand their business with the hope that as they grow, they'll have uh, the ability to keep more regular hours. The Welcome Center would also give visitors a place to begin their visit <coughs> when arriving in the village. Staff would be able to update them about the gallery, shops, and restaurants that are open and the outdoor community artwork that they can look for. We would also be able to show some examples um, from different galleries and businesses so that they can decide where they would like to visit next based on their favorites and we can help them plan their visit. Uh, the Welcome Center would be a place where new and prospective residents and businesses could, could come and learn more about the area as well as grant opportunities available through the CRA uh, and directly through the Guild as well. We believe that this will help bring the community together, allow more involvement and events, expand our membership, further partnerships with other nonprofits, implement additional items from our mission statement <coughs> and streamline our operations. <coughs> With all of that being said, uh, since we last received approval to explore this prospect at our general meeting in April, we've held two special membership meetings. And I am so excited to report that this past Sunday, we received a strong approval from our members to move forward with that purchase and with our vision. Uh, and we think that this is gonna be a game changer for the Guild and for the Village. Once we acquire the property, we're located in the heart of the Village, um, and the Welcome Center should be operational almost immediately. So I wanted to update you guys on that really exciting news um, before we start moving into the specific funding requests that I know you have on the agenda. So that's our exciting news. I'm gonna skip to the first one. This one I don't have the best printout of, and I apologize. But I'm still gonna put something up. So, uh, since the previous meeting, we had done our best to address questions, um, and we wanted to present the funding proposal with some additional information and justify the requests and s explain better how those funds are gonna be used to meet the, the guild, the village, and the city. Uh, the items pre being presented are in order based on the membership's priorities, which were voted on at our gener general meeting. Uh, so priority number one, and again, I believe you already would have this in front of you, uh, but this was for business retention, expansion, and creation. Uh, Andrew did talk about this last time a little bit, uh, but the request was for up to $8,000 for fiscal year 2021 to 22, <coughs> and up to $24,000 <coughs> for fiscal year 22 to 23, 23 to 24, and 24 to 25. Um, it would be a commitment, a three-year commitment to support the artists and merchants in the village uh, with a $2,000 contribution per month. We would be doing promotions on social media, um, updating merchant information, coordinating with merchants to get their updated professional pictures, updating our maps and brochures, and promoting Village of the Arts events. So how would this um, help us? What, what would the goal of this be? Partially, it's gonna be more visibility. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't know the village was here until recently. There's a lot of other people that don't, and if they knew, um, it would be a, a big driver of, of business. So additional funding for business retention, expansion, and creation would help us attract more artists, businesses, and visitors to the Village of the Arts. Uh, we would love to be able to attract national and international artists to display their works, teach classes, and take inspiration from the Village, making Bradenton an art destination. This would give us the opportunity to support and boost our merchants on social media. We foresee this facilitating additional artists and businesses moving into the community versus additional investors. And with increased visitors, we'll increase tax revenues for the city. Uh, per your request, we had been getting some quotes for what these services would cost. We do have one back in. A lot of these um, marketing proposals are taking longer uh, to get in. These, these are busy companies. Uh, but I do have some numbers, and again, this is the part I'd like to show you. I don't have the best printout. I was supposed to summarize it and did not, so I apologize. So this one, okay. <laughs> So this kind of goes down the list of items uh, that would be included in that request. Uh, monthly ongoing um, website maintenance, local SEO, search engine optimization, Facebook ads. Is it going? Yep, okay. Um, ad spend. 
uh, social media management, and they gave us two different price points for that, so kind of depending which one we would go with. And, ah, there. <laughs> Social profile optimization, uh, manual engagement, and event management bundle. So just kind of to total it based on their numbers, and it would probably come in a little bit differently, but they're seeing um, reoccurring costs uh, on a monthly basis of $2,325 for services like that. Uh, and then there's also some one-time expenses uh, such as custom website design and the social profile optimization that could total around $4,000. Excuse me. Um what was that a, a company yes yeah, so this is a proposal um, from uh, roaring results Brittany Roar that we received you e roar is that that's not in our packet is it? it's is not that, this no. is uh, I was not this is not part of my discussion with uh -oh. Andrew so this uh -oh. is news to me um, and I would have to this is a portion of what those funds would be used for mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to get you a quote to see kind of how expensive those things would be to have a more professional and properly run online presence. Did you, and have you, uh, excuse me, and, and have you um, talked to a different couple different um, companies? I know NetWeave has been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. the local so company. We are getting additional quotes. I think we have two or three others that we're still waiting on. Okay. Um, we had tried to set up meetings and in the month's time we haven't been able to get additional quotes back yet, but they are being worked on and um, we are going to obviously look through them and select the one that's going to be the most okay. logical and, and hopefully affordable. Or, or well, it's just be always nice to see you know, more than one. Not Absolutely. only not only pricing, but what they offer because it's mm -hmm. kind of like the uh, you know it's kind of a new frontier there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you. I don't know if this is the right. Uh, back to the welcome center, of this house. Mm -hmm. um, what what is the age of the roof on that house do you know sure so the property was purchased in 2016 and probably should have been torn down the owner at that time uh, redid the roof redid the HVAC system redid the plumbing made everything ADA accessible uh, so the roof was probably from 17 or 18 somewhere in that range mm -hmm. and so, so I, I talked to someone over there saying so, so this is this is something you all are taking on upon yourself this is not our we are not involved in this in any way, yeah, shape, or form. For money so for money. They're, yeah, they're asking for money, but it's not. We're not on the. So, no. the welcome center without direct support, we can still do that. We have a budget. We actually have four budgets, depending on how things are yeah. looking and what we're doing. Um, and so, we do have an ask um, later down on the agenda. But as I said, we are <clears throat> prioritizing our asks by what the village has requested or the guild has requested that we ask for first. Right. So if that would be approved, it would just kind of be, um, you know, the cherry on top. But it's not something that we are necessarily relying on at this point. Well, the reason I was asking is um, for this multiple year, <coughs> $3,700 on a house this age seems a little light for, for budgeting for maintenance. That's, that's just, I, I'm concerned about, you know, if we care, if we basically help you all for three years, I want to make sure you all are able to take it on mm -hmm. afterwards that it's not just going to be I'm yeah. just okay. and uh, I was I was confused because we have this information and then we received this information um, talking about possibly using part of the, the property that we are purchasing we haven't closed on it yet but we're purchasing so my question is is this the one that that the artist guild felt more comfortable with or was this discussed at the meeting when this was discussed i i just don't know i wasn't there sure and that's a very fair question um i do have it on the agenda that i'm presenting later but i'd be happy to address it now so that you guys have a, a more full picture um so at the meeting that we held on sunday um we did uh talk about that other option um that may be available but the um Guild had agreed that we should ask to maybe have a seat at the table when decisions are being made there. But because we don't know the state of the property, if and when this will 100% close, um, what the costs are going to be involved with that, and because there was a timer ticking on this deal that we had already been working on, uh, they, they asked us to go ahead and, and inquire about that at the meeting today, but to move forward and they approved the purchase of the other property. 
So, I, and I, I spent a great deal of time talking to someone, so let's see if I can clarify this. They, they, wanna, they wanna leave their options open. So they, want, they, they basically That's voted to move forward on the, um, per, well, it's not even a, barely, it's a, it's a friendly sale. So I would I'd call it a purchase, but it's a friendly sale of the property. From what I understand, they also want to be able to look at, and we have no idea what these houses look like on the green property. Mm -hmm. they, they might not be saveable. So, but they From would the like outside, to. From the outside, I just I, drove by there yesterday. They look really, really rough. I question, I question whether they can be salvaged, but they want to they have the right to inspect them and so basically to, for us to forego immediately tearing them down. But they're, they're kind of moving forward in both directions right now. That's a very good summary. We didn't feel it was prudent to let an opportunity for something that we can occupy immediately slip by when we don't have a timeline on when we might be able to occupy another proposed property. Uh, we did have a general contractor drive by. We agree with your assessment, uh, the brick house in particular. Uh, he, he, yeah. Yeah. So, so we, were, <laughs> we were concerned um, and, and our decision is, is based on some of those concerns and having something that's more immediate available to us. I, I just think I mean, the purchase price on the other house is over, is over 300, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a lot of a, that's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may yeah. recommend, because I think we're jumping in different places, I would, I would recommend that we first discuss the proposal that was before us, um, and then the house situation, the visitor center, to kind of put it separate towards the end. Um, and, and for priority number one, kind of what's described today is much different than what I had discussed with the president um, a month or so ago. So I would, if this is gonna be the new proposal, I would have to go and research to see if that's legal and if we're able to pay for them to hire a company to do these items. My understanding was that the funding was going to go towards a person that um, you all would manage, you all would, you know, uh, and then that person would, up, you know, include those items that we had on the request, update the map and brochure, promotion of the events, uh, the website, answer questions from the public. So my concern is if, if we're going with somebody like that, then some of these items are not going to be accomplished. So. If there's a change in the request or I'm misunderstanding. Um, well, and I'm not privy to the conversations yeah. that you had with Andrew, obviously. Yeah. Um, but those items are still something that we want. We just wanted to give you a proposal of what some of the overhead for this might look like, and we would be picking up other pieces of that overhead. So we're still planning on moving forward. We cannot pay for overhead. So, well, no, yeah, well, yeah. so we're still looking on moving forward with a welcome center that would have staff, and the staff that's going to be there would be responsible for some of these other pieces. Some of this may be outsourced, some of it may be done in-house. I don't have a you know full bid from everyone so that we can price things, and I don't have uh, the ability to tell you which piece comes from here or there. But um, again, we wanted to show kind of what it would cost on a monthly basis just for that social media piece, really, and, and for that, that part of the design. Um, I don't have an object like of how many hours the, the staff that we would have would be spending on this, but that would be a very, very large portion, especially in the beginning, getting everything updated and streamlined and where it needs to be. Uh, it's gonna be very busy. <laughs> okay. um, so priority number one, we really don't know. I mean, you, you've, get, you've given us a, an estimate of stuff you would want, sure. but it seems like that's still a moving target, right? Is that true? Um, so possibly Andrew could answer it better. I'm not the expert in social media or what we need in those, those pieces. Um, I don't know if it's possible that we can have some kind of a budget available that we work with Katerina on. That would be amazing. But if you need more detail, we would have to come back with that weird detail board. I understand. We we did the best we could getting as much yeah. detail as we could for you guys. Okay. Um, now, moving into priority number two, events, that's pretty easy. <laughs> We're going to hope so. All 
right, so there are your starters. All right, so um, what we were looking at is for the next three fiscal years, uh, nothing this year, uh, but it's up to five events total uh, and a, a total a dollar amount of $30,000. We would want one large event, uh, such as Festival of the Skeletons, which has typically been kind of our headlining event, where we have a little bit of a higher budget, uh, maybe a $10,000 budget for that, and then up to four other new events uh, with a budget of about $5,000. Uh, we would work on the theme and calendar of events to be mutually agreed upon, and of course we'd be working around other events that you guys might be uh, sponsoring and, and helping with. We want to make sure that we're going to be the big event that weekend, or you know, obviously no one's going to get the biggest draw. Uh, so benefits to the guild, the village, and the city. We want to make festival, festival of the Skeletons or another event a flagship event for the village and for Bradington, similar to the Blues Festival or Sarasota's Chalk Festival. We'd like it to be a large draw and help us attract an international crowd. We want the ability to close streets, making additional room for visitors as well as vendors and performers. Uh, and we want to increase our visibility and bring in additional tax revenue. Uh, these are some numbers based on prior events. Uh, the column on your left is a kind of just basically a medium size event uh, and this is a ballpark these numbers have probably increased a little bit due to inflation uh, we haven't had another big event uh, super recently uh, so that's kind of the total that we would be spending uh, maybe a couple years ago for one of these medium sized events uh, and then the column on the right are additional expenses so the column on the left is included in the total at the bottom uh, something like Festival of Skeletons where we're having headlining bands stage sound lighting uh, table rentals things like that, it's gonna total in a little bit more. Uh, so on, on the medium events, we're, we're a little over 5,166. And then on those larger events, our total's around $11,750. Can I read it, is that in our package? No, no, no. no. Uh, well. So are we, or is this again kind of like, mm -hmm. we're gonna just say this is good, we're gonna put this in the budget for next year, but they'll come back with specifics for the events or? It, the the goal was if you approved the request, some of it is for this fiscal year, some of it is for next fiscal year, um, and then we would we would draft a contract that would delineate the details. So what is the, what is their responsibility? Some deliverables, the scope of work, and then what would be our funding commitment or any other commitment that you agree. So this was a preliminary we. We agree with this, you know, up to and some of these costs, and then we would take it to legal to I mean, draft I thought something. usually events came to us. They had a date. They had the name of their event. This is what's going to be here. This seems a little bit, um, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I am 100%, but I just feel like we need the details before we say, yeah, well, am I wrong? Am I, uh, uh, the idea was to not come five times for events, wow. um, and, that's, and that's why we said it was gonna be in conjunction, we, that we would work on it. As long as we had a contract and then we worked towards these events, it would be mutually agreed upon between them and us. It's just avoiding to having to come for each event. But if that's what the board prefers, we don't have to go this route. I mean, I, I just, we, we have no dates, no, I mean, no description of the event. Unless, I mean, if you're telling me these are going to be, like, what's that, uh, Friday night art, walk. art walks? If these are going to be art walks, are they going to be some kind of music? I, I don't know. I just don't feel like we're getting enough information yet. And, they, and I'm not, that's not a, I just think I'd like a little more meat on the bones before I, I'm asked to vote for something. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. I can appreciate that. Um, I believe. But I want you to know I'm supporting you. Keep moving forward. I just want yeah. a little more meat. So just for a little additional information, uh, Festival of the Skeletons is typically that first uh, weekend in November right after Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, we've planned that event fairly regularly. So that one, we know where it is. We kind of have an idea of the expenses. We don't have a band booked. We don't have any of that done. But Understandable, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and the, the budget that we have or that I, I believed we were looking at was for fiscal years 2022 through 2023. So we weren't asking for funds for this existing fiscal year. So that kind of gives us a longer term to plan them. The four medium size events would probably be in conjunction with Art Walk Weekend, so that first Saturday or the first Friday, just depending on what they're wanting to do. Uh, some of the ideas that we've had for events uh, are maybe like a Pride one in June, something like that. Uh, we had talked about arts and draughts. We would like to do something around Christmas. So we do have a lot of those ideas. 
Um, and we're hoping to make an event that's kind of replicable. So once you do it and you get your vendors and you sign this up and you have your street closures and you have this plan, we can do that on a repeatable basis and make it easy. If that means we need to come in front of you guys repeatedly and tell you the same plan <laughs> with, with specifics and dates and whatever you need, we're happy to do that. Uh, and the request is for reimbursement after the event once we return receipts as well, assuming everything has been agreed upon. Questions? Yes, Bill. Do you have any events on the tip of your tongue now that you're wanting in the next, say, 90 days or no. none at all? No. So this is, this is just to be in the next next events probably in October this, this uh, it would be the festival of the skeletons the festival of skeletons and start. we know you have that every year so you're very familiar mm -hmm. so I, I'm just making a suggestion here that we know that that's a good event and we've witnessed it before I've been there you know okay. and so <clears throat> maybe we need to if we're wanting if you're wanting something to work with maybe we need to work with something we know that happens every year because it's a celebration in their in the villages do we have a date for that on this i would look at the calendar and i can let you know yep. yeah it's october whatever it's it's the first weekend in november yeah per november okay so uh, it looks like that would be november um fourth and fifth and, and usually the friday night is the bigger deal so november 4th so that's the friday and saturday night or november or whatever mm -hmm. and, and and that's the annual thing that you guys have there i would make a suggestion that we work on that right now and, and come back with all this other stuff after it's been uh, vetted by our director hey, can i bring up one other thing and this may not pertain but once again we're seeing more stage 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 i think we need to discuss that again about purchasing a stage i do too we can discuss that another time but Yes, I do too. <laughs> I think it might save everybody some money and probably we could rent probably it out. Us we the don't most. use it to uh, <laughs> yeah. others, you know. I agree. Do you feel? Well, can I make a motion then that that we uh, address the uh, November first weekend November uh, Festival of Skeletons? at this time with the funding of that and then move forward with more uh, information that can bring <coughs> to us through our executive director. Is that, is that something anybody would second? Or? I, I, do you see anything wrong with that? No, I don't, it's all, okay. however, if you want to piecemeal it, I just thought it was, I, so if I, that's. I don't think yeah. we have enough information to do all of that. I just don't. I think maybe. At least for this one, e the first event, and then right. afterwards we may just right. clump. Well, yeah, second, Pam, is that a second? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's a that's a motion. A second. All in favor, say aye. Oh no, discussion. Who made the motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> just real quick. Been. Just real quick. I'm not saying that we can't in 30 days no. do the other ones. I, so. I just need more details. More. That's all. Well, that's I think all they're saying. working through the process too. So yeah. I, exactly. New and, and so from what I understand, they just voted on one something on Monday. So this, well, is, and that's, this is a moving target. Yeah, well, and I, I think for us, we need it to be a little I, bit more static. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I said that. And, and, and there's a lot coming at us, but we can give them something yeah. right now yeah. and just keep working with them. Yep. Okay, I'll call the question. <laughs> the question is? to sponsor the Festival of Skeletons for ten up to ten thousand dollars. I thought it was sixty eight sixty five eighty five. Right. Now that's no, additional. That's, see, see what I mean? This is very confusing, right. all of it. No, it's, it's right here. It's right on, here. On I think it says ten thousand right up. So on, 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 on the pages that we have. Oh, you're, oh I'm looking at oh, those. I'm not, okay, we don't have that. We, we have we have a sheet right, we here. Have a sheet that says 10, and it says uh, on on priority number two up to five events. Top of the line. Okay, to up to ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. And of course, this is reimbursement as the receipts come in. Right. If you don't send in the receipts, you don't get reimbursed. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that's a that's a motion. So. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to priority three. Um, so that's going to be the proposal for the interactive 3D crosswalks. 
Uh, and we do have a bid on that as well. So it would be up to $10,000 per intersection. Um, depending on the intersection, it may be one, two, or three, or four crosswalks. Um, we are asking for one intersection for fiscal year 21-22 and up to two for fiscal year 22-23. to 23. Uh, They would be placed at various intersections in the neighborhood to be mutually agreed upon by the CRA, the Guild, and working congruently with Public Works as uh, street updates are happening. Uh, the benefits for this one I think might be more obvious. We have a bit of a safety issue in the village uh, with motorists speeding through uh, some of those intersections. And we feel like having these specialty crosswalks uh, would help slow our traffic a little bit, make the crosswalks more noticeable, and also keep with the village's eclectic and artistic vibe. Uh, the proposal is for artwork um, at $20 per square foot. And we've taken those measurements and then prioritized intersections we'd like to see these installed at. Before I put that up, I do want to show you a couple of examples. Um, these are from the artist that had given us the quote of $20 a square foot. That quote does not include um, the lines on the side of the crosswalks, those white lines that kind of outline them, uh, just the artwork inside. But uh, he does some really neat work. I do not know what artwork we are going with with him. We would be designing it as we go. It could be something <laughs> local. Um, but they do have some really good options. He does beautiful work. Uh, and we feel like having something like this um, throughout the village would just be really nice and help with our safety issues. So that's a little bit about the artwork that he has available or some of what I guess he's done previously. This has been done in other cities or? Mm -hmm. So we have one locally, I believe. You have one locally? Yes, we do. Wrong direction. So um, Andrew did prioritize the um, intersections that we were interested in seeing this happen in and did uh, use Google Earth to kind of do some measurements and then some ballpark pricing based on that $20 a square foot number that we had received. Uh, the minimum width for a crosswalk is going to be six feet. Uh, so the first one that we're looking at on the map is number one and that would be at 13th Avenue West and 12th Street West. There's actually three different crosswalks there uh, at the moment. Uh, and the total on that project would be about $8,800. The second one is uh, just above that on the map, 12th Avenue West and 12th Street West. That one has two crosswalks uh, for a total of $7,600. The third intersection is one of the big ones. There's actually four crosswalks, so each street has one going across. Uh, that's 11th Avenue West and 12th Street West. Uh, and so the total for that project does come in a little bit above 10,000 based on our measurements. Uh, Andrew had said if you weren't able to go above that amount that we would pick that up because it would be worth doing. Um, there's additional ones listed. I can read them off if you'd like, but I, I, we wanted to give you some specific recommendations where we would prioritize. And again, it's some of those busy thoroughfares um, and then also around where those apartment complexes are being built. We thought that it would be good to have some um, of these crosswalks available close to that. Question. Uh, <clears throat> the last statement you made probably would be down the road because there's going to be construction there for two or three years so that would be low price how did you prioritize these and what's the uh, experience with other communities having these with, for the longevity of it is this something you're going to, have to paint the doctor up every year does it last five years with track mm -hmm. i mean is this a is this an ongoing maintenance thing for for the village so I don't think it would be an annual maintenance type of an item, not my area of expertise, so I apologize. I imagine that there's some kind of sealant that's going over it if it's being used specifically to paint crosswalks. That would hopefully you know, lengthen the life a little bit. I'm sure it will need touching up. Once the initial work is done, I think that it's probably something we have enough artists in the village that we might be able to take care of either very inexpensively or, or more or less for free. Um, but I don't have a definitive 100% answer on that. Are, are, th are, this art, are these artists local? We have local artists, yeah, yeah. and, and the, the one that this. put this proposal together, his name is Truman, and he is local. He's, I think, Sarasota. And he has ownership in the villages? Uh, no, no, I don't believe so. Okay, so uh, I, I'd be in favor of doing these myself one at a time, and you've prioritized them as one. Number one is $8,800, but I'd like to have a little bit more information myself as to if this is just throwing money away because it's only going to last three years because you know, it's expensive. Uh, I mean, I know the roadway, it's a big maintenance expense for the uh, F dot to paint just the yellow stripe. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very expensive. I did that on a racetrack mm 
<laughs> it was an enormous fee, mm -hmm. and it don't last. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, I wouldn't. I think the money would be better spent if it's, if you, if you could. Is can we verify this in some way that other cities done it and it's lasted or, or if it's clear coded or whatever? Sure. Again, Andrew may have additional information. I have not personally looked into it. I can't answer that question, but we can get you some answers. Yeah, I'd be in favor of starting one to see what it because I love this stuff. It, it it's great. You know, it's one of those that you think you're going down in a hole and so forth. It might scare the kids. Maybe you got to get it before. <laughs> November. But uh, I I love that kind of stuff. But I don't know what the longevity. I know you do the chalk thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, that will last to the first rain. Probably. Yeah, that's not what we're proposing, not for that dollar that. amount. <laughs> I know that, but, but these things are, 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 are good. I just, I just want you know, some verification that okay. we're not spending money and have to do it every three years. Yes, sir. Okay, Mrs. Barnaby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my thought is perhaps we should get with Public Works mm -hmm. and do a traffic count <clears throat> as well as um, putting the speed trailer out there to see the speed of people, because it, it may be that where we have at, at 13th Ave and 12th Street, we <coughs> may need to look at doing a three-way stop. But the traffic count could help us with that, as well as uh, the information taken off the speed trailer. So I would recommend that our executive director get with both Public Works and the Police Department to have those set up so that um, we can A, verify. Um, but I will tell you that having sat outside at Bird Rock Taco mm -hmm. and watched people go down 13th Ave like it's, you know, a drag strip, and it, it just blows my mind away the people that are coming down that street and we have parking on that street mm -hmm. and it's it's just I think God loves the village of the arts because nobody's been hit and killed there <laughs> I'll just say it that way um, but I think that we need to look at getting the um, traffic counts and the and a speed speed ta uh, speed machine set there I'll work with Mr. McLaren. We already spoke about potentials um, because he said there there will be some improvements. So we didn't want to start on anywhere that Public Works is doing any projects coming up. So he had given a couple of intersections. So I'll work with him. Yeah. I'll get the, these recommendations and we'll come back to you with something say, specific. Could, could we have you do that and yeah. get the information? Undurability. Um, and, and brought back to us? Yeah, I, having been on the DDA when we were doing the stamping of the bricks, I know that that was a big issue. There's DOT requirements. Mm -hmm. And now that was a faster, I'm sure KK <laughs> remembers that. So there's, the, I love it. I wanna see this happen. Mm -hmm. I would, would kinda of like to see it work with our pu new public art group. Um, definitely focus on the warranty from the artist. I would imagine the artist isn't going to allow just anybody to go and freshen up his artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the maintenance and all that, because we've been through this with the splash pad, oh, things yeah. that the Florida sun, every, I mean, it just, when you start talking about some of these um, public art projects, you need someone that understands it, which Truman does beautiful work. I don't know if he's done street um stamping i know he does the chalk and i know he does mosaics or yeah he does and paints but i just i think when you're talking about on a roadway it's a it's a whole nother game mm -hmm. especially that it'll last um and if we're going to invest in it i want it to last so i'd want to know about warranty and about has he done this before somewhere um but i'm i'm in favor of doing these i'm a little curious because i know every, for so many years it's been we want people to know where the village is, and none. Of, and these are all on interior, and none of them are on any of the major roads. I, I that's that's the only question I have. But it, you guys know what you want and your priorities. So, and I would say, mm -hmm. uh, on those numbers we're staring at, one, four, and six are areas that are going to start are going to get a lot of traffic. Tra you know, when we develop our property and when the construction starts. Anything we put down there right now will probably be erased by truck traffic mm -hmm. promptly. So maybe, you know, Andrew might not have factored that in, but. Well, he might not have been aware of what 
yeah. we are as a city yeah. are looking at yeah. so right and just prioritizing them was to give you an idea but obviously it's to work with yeah. um, you and and with yeah. public works so we're happy to take all of that into account and I appreciate the feedback about everything okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, do you need a motion, or can we just direct staff to get back with us at our yeah. Uh, yeah. next or next yeah, couple of meetings? Yeah. I took notes down. I think next meeting we can okay. present something to you. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that moves us back uh, to priority four, which is the assistance with creation of the community welcome center. Um, we've talked about it already, the vision that we have, um, how we feel like this is going to be um, helpful uh, moving forward. I'm going to put the information down kind of about the specific ask that we're looking at. Uh, so right now, we had looked at renting and we had looked at purchasing. Uh, and the rental agreement would have been a $2,000 monthly payment. Uh, the purchase agreement that we've been able to work out, including our mortgage payment, um, so interest and principal, and then also escrowing our insurance is probably going to be about $2,012 a month, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so for that and some additional reasons, uh, the Guild has, has moved forward with that purchase option right now. Uh, so obviously we couldn't ask at the previous meeting, and, and Katarina didn't have the details to put out, uh, but we're asking for $1,000 per month. Um, Andrew had listed it basically as a matching amount, effective as of July 1st. Uh, and we're asking for the, that for about $3,000 then for this fiscal year, 21 to 22. Uh, and then 12,000 in the next three fiscal years. This would help us establish the center while we ramp up our fundraising efforts, work on other grant opportunities, and begin increasing our visibility. Our, oh, I talked about the mortgage, excuse me. Um, establishing the Welcome Center would be fundamental in advancing the mission of the Artist Guild, growing the village of the arts, and making Bradenton an international art destination. Uh, we would have the center open a minimum of three to four days a week. We'd be able to promote our merchants and galleries. Um, even if they're seasonally closed, we would still have their you know, brochures, their information, some of their work on display. Uh, we'd be able to give information to our guests about the businesses and the events in the neighborhood. <coughs> we would have it as a hub for these events uh, and to reconnect our residents. Uh, we would use it as a meeting space um, and we would have the opportunity to display guest artists that rotate seasonally. Uh, like I mentioned, we do have four different budgets um, so <laughs> we're moving forward with this with or without assistance. We would greatly appreciate some if you can you know, figure out a way to do that where, where it makes sense. Um, but it's moving forward. Okay. And I do have a card here from Annie Rossini on this particular issue. Mm -hmm. So would you uh, mute? One what? comment. I didn't think we could uh, fund operating expense through the CRA. So my, my actually comment would be because I didn't have the exact request up until right now that I would have to go back on our master plan and find to see if we're able legally to pay for that. Right. But, if you, but my first question would be if, if you're interested in this, then I will do the research and come back to you. I just, we didn't know the option until... Just, I, just, I, yeah. I, I don't think we can, but that's just from my <laughs> education. I know they just recently met, so it's nothing on their end that they could have given us. So Sunday they had a meeting, um, and I understood there were potentially two proposals. I didn't have the specifics, but if this is their formal request, then, and you all are potentially interested in entertaining it, I will go back, look at it from a legal standpoint, and then get back to you. Mr. Jim? Yes, Ms. Barney. I, I would be interested in finding out a, if we, if we can help them with this, and B, they may be asking it this way, we may have to do it another way. Right. Okay. And so that's the information I would like to have. Okay. Because I, I, I think that this is a great idea. I remember when the village started, and it was one of those things that, that uh, you know, everyone was like, oh, we'll be open, we'll all be open on these days and these days and these days. And then reality set in, and second, you know, the, the job that was paying the bills might not have been the artist's job, and it became more difficult to know when different galleries were going to open at which time and, and that sort of thing. So I, I can see that this could be useful, could be very useful and very helpful. Mm -hmm. I just want to know that we can do it. You know, how if we, if the board chooses to do it, what's the way that we can legally do it? 
this, ma'am. And we would want you to do it in the, in the most appropriate way. Like Katarina said, we hadn't talked about this previously. So it sounds like once we chat, if there's a way, then we can represent that portion, I think. As I used to say to my kids, do you want a slow yes or a fast I no? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stick with the slow yes, ma'am. <laughs> right, OK. Um, so I'd like to get this citizen's comment card dealt with here. So if you might. I'll scoot for a moment, yeah. Yes. Mr. Sini. Hello, Annie Rossini, 1001 11th Avenue West. I'm not quite sure what to say. I was going to speak to the events, but you already um, passed that, I guess, already, the 10,000 for the Dia del Suertes. I would just say um, it would be my uh, suggestion that you get a real clear um, fiscal um, presentation as to how they're going to go about this event, I think, with $10,000. Uh, from you folks, uh, they can put on a heck of an event. Um, when I did the last successful Dia del Suertes, event it was the Greg Allman tribute uh, in 2017 we haven't really had anything since then um, that was fourteen thousand dollars and that was in um, kind uh, contributions of banners uh, advertising food drink um, tables chairs were at a discount for our sponsors and then 14 three, 13 or 14 sponsor tables in the end that were three hundred dollars each so basically as the executive of that particular um, concert um, I got as many and I and I headed that I got as many donations as I could possibly get because you know funding is was limited for us and um, we haven't as I said put on any events since um, that are of any consequence and uh, so now we're three uh, boards down from 2017 so this board has never put on an event before so and we only have three or four of our nine board members. So I think, you know, it's going to be a lot of um, getting up to speed. And I'm very happy to offer all of the paperwork that I had from 2017 to litigate anything in case we want to do it where we don't have to spend $10,000, but that we can get some things in kind. That's really all I have to say about that. Um, the business retention and the promo marketing that um, was spoken about um, last time we were here on the 27th of April and currently I think is uh, essential. Uh, we definitely need to have some kind of an IT person and we need to do some marketing for sure. As I told you last time, uh, Ruth Warren, the Warren Center, she was the person who did all that work for us and she is passed on now. So it would be good for us to get back up to, excuse me, back up to speed. Um, so, and then the last, uh, and then <laughs> the center, of course, I've always thought that we would do well by having a center in the Village of the Arts where people can come in, get all the same information uh, consistently, and have um, product to take with them, brochures, what have you, um, find out who's open, when, and where, and just everything that we as individuals already do at this time. Um, we, as we met on um, Sunday, didn't have any of the information that you've been given today, so our vote was get, uh, made without any of the information that we have here today, that you have here today, excuse me. So um, there was, a, the community was invited, but only the members of the guild uh, were allowed to vote, and that did pass to try and purchase um, the building that they're talking about. I still personally believe that um, I would like to see us develop the um, 13th Avenue at 12th Street property that you folks have just purchased. I think that that could go a lot further in um, uh, helping us to uh, center the Village of the Arts, uh, at, uh, because that is the physical center of the Village of the Arts. Uh, way back, DDA Bill Throw uh, really saw that as thir 13th Avenue as being the center. It is the physical center, and I think we, as a city, would be well served in doing something that really uh, cements that as, as our center at the Village Yard. So I would like to see a center there personally. I would hope that the um, guild can pull off this purchase um, and pay for it all the way through. And with your help, um, perhaps that can come to fruition. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Um. All right, 
great. Um, I don't know if it's standard to address anything, but um, let me know if I'm able to or not based on her comments. Okay. Um, did you want to, do, so did you have um, item five, priority five? I do, and that one's going to be um, pretty quick, I think. Basically, the information that you were given um, by Katerina already should mostly cover that. Um, so it was for miscellaneous expenses, um, and we felt that uh, $10,000 per fiscal year uh, for projects that were mutually agreed upon by the Guild and CRA um, that we could use to work together and address additional needs. Uh, a possible request for next fiscal year, maybe updating our signage. Uh, maybe getting open signs for the businesses that are easy to display something like that so that it's more uniform when we are open um, Again, we don't have budgets on that. We don't have details on that. That's why it's under miscellaneous uh, That's something that Andrew and Katarina had talked about and thought that it might be um, a Good way to explore some other things that we we need as we move forward okay. So my my brief observation is so you're now aware we are about budgets and details so, you know, we've got this a lot, a lot to come at us right now, and it's, I think certainly we're all interested in, in trying to help you all any way we can. But we, it, there's, it needs to be a lot more specifics coming in. Mm -hmm. So you now know that, that the board is amicable, but right. details. Yes. still curious. Detail, detail, detail. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that we already spoke about our final request, um, which was uh, about that, that purchase that the city is still working on, so I don't know that I need to address that again, but uh, we do have a contractor <coughs> that would be able to tour uh, if we were given that opportunity. Okay, and, and we don't own the properties yet, yes, so sir. we have no idea what they look like. Yes, sir. Um, so if you can keep us in mind, <laughs> we'd appreciate it. And I want to remind the board that if we are to lease the properties, um, we would have to still advertise them um, being in a CRA. So if we do decide we would like it to go one way or another, we still have to do our due diligence. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Katarina, Th thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, are we on the SUFA signs? Uh, we are down to SUFA signs. Sufa. Like huh? Sufa. Sufa. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Chair. Oh, well, see, my chair just stepped out. The rest of the board, uh, City Attorney, Executive Director, Dr. St. Luce, uh, Assistant City Administrator. Um, for the benefit of those who may not have seen the meeting this morning, uh, City Council approved the three-party agreement with between the city, CRA, and changing environments, which produces a SUFA sign. I'll bring out these pictures again. The SUFA signs are a, what's called an on-street digital media experience. It's a way of bringing um, your online content out in the physical world, if you will. These are signs about seven feet, six inches tall, made of what has a 42-inch uh, Kindle type of screen. So you can see it uh, day or night, direct sunlight. These pictures are from Miami Dade County, where I went in February to take pictures of them as they have them in their transit area called the Underline, which is on Brickell Avenue. SUFA, so uh, just a little inf information, is a female founded company. The co founders are uh, went from uh, MIT and Harvard, and they have these signs around the country. Um, just expanded on the West Coast and in California. City of Groveland, Florida currently has six of these and is going to be adding 20. Um, cities of Orlando and Fort Myers are expected to have some later this year. So with the agreement that we have, um, uh, that we're asking for approval for, is to purchase up to four signs where the intended locations would be one somewhere along the Riverwalk, one by the uh, garage, one by the Dream Center and one in Village of the Arts. With the benefit of these signs, the are, these signs are, use cellular connection and solar power, so they do not require any underground utilities. Take about 30 minutes to install. The vendor uh, will also come and clean the signs between every two to four weeks if you purchase at least four of these. And actually, what actually be pretty good is if this is approved and we have an opportunity to maybe get involved with the Public Art Advisory Board to help design the vinyls because we would have full control over the content 
on the screen and what's used on the vinyls. And that was going to be, can I interrupt? Who's going to design the, the vinyls? That's a joint effort between the city and CRA, so we will come up with, we can come up with the <laughs> items that's, that's on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know who would be responsible for that. Well, just coming up with content. We can say, oh, we just want this picture, or we come up Oh, with no, I'm app. talking about the stands themselves. Oh, no, that's the, the company. Wrap? Yeah, exactly. yeah, the wrap. That's that's the company. They produce everything. We give them the. Is it going to look like that with the pink and the blue and? That that's what Miami Dade County did. Miami Dade County did that, but we can come up with. Any and you said you want. wanted to work with the Public Art Advisory Board. Oh, that might be a good opportunity. I think it's to a great have idea. Them, have them do that. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, okay. the signs have uh, limited public engagement, so you can put the type of information you can put on the signs, upcoming events. You know, calendar of items. You can also put a link to a quiz so folks can scan the screen with their mobile device, pop up a quiz, you get content and feedback back. And, and all the signs also give you information on how many people are walking around the signs in the area in case you want to do particular marketing campaigns. With that, I'll answer any other questions you might have. Mr. Um, Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I was going to move to authorize the CRA chair and CRA staff to purchase four of the SUFA signs, execute the attached agreement, and coordinate with city staff and vendors regarding the installation and maintenance of the signs. And I would add that uh, staff is directed to work with the Public Art Advisory Board as to possible uh, colors and schematics for the wrapped part of the sign. Second. Second. Um, can I ask, is this is this all in the Bradenton CRA? Is this how's how's this being funded? Two of them would be in the Bradenton CRA. Um, the one would be in the downtown area. One on the Riverwalk. Then one on the 14th Street in the Village of the Arts, and one in the Central CRA okay. at Norma Lloyd Park somewhere. Okay. All right. That's a motion and a second. Discussion. Yes. Uh, I was stepped out, so I'm sorry. Um, as long as the, what have I said before in the city council meeting, as long as there's a policy on what, what about the content. content and it needs to have um, maybe multiple administrators and, and CRA directed. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item G, funding request, marketing of the River Walk Downtown and Village of the Arts. This is um, an initiative that started also again in the Market Bradenton Internal Committee um, and um, uh, Mike Terraziano, manager in IT, and Lance uh, Williams, assistant finance director, are leading the effort. Um, and here with us today, we have uh, the, the vendor that we would like to engage with to give you also a presentation. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Terraziano. Uh, or to Dr. St. Luz, whoever. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as um, Katarina mentioned this sort of came out of our internal <clears throat> um, discussions on our marketing subcommittee that we sort of created um, with Mr. Perry um, and we came across a, uh, a website that the islands are using um, to sort of um, showcase what's available out on Anna Maria um, and we um, found um, John who is a local resident here in Bradenton um, that does this type of work and so I kind of want to turn it over to him to let you all see what he can do and where we're trying to go with this. If that's okay. All right. Thank you very much Mike. My name is John Egros. I've been a resident here in Bradenton since 2015 when I relocated with uh, Feld Entertainment and uh, since uh, times have changed I've uh, started this company and we do interactive 360 tours and uh, this is a demonstration of uh, one I, that I built for the Riverwalk and the skate park. Now, um, 
these are fully interactive. So anything that you can do with a website, you can pretty much add in as an interactive element. Uh, for instance, on the entrance here to the Riverwalk, you can click on this and it opens up another page with the Realized Bradenton site. Um, so it can have external links and you can basically navigate it as if uh, similar to Google Street View, mm -hmm. except with the ability to have it fully interactive. You can have a video pop up, and this pulls up a video about the river walk. You can have images embedded, and so these can be embedded onto any website. You can share the link directly with someone. You can share it on social media. Uh, right there, it opens up an image with the inscription that is on that artwork. Um, there's uh, lead generation contact information. You can embed forms. Like I said, pretty much anything that you think of that you can do uh, with HTML can pretty much be added into it. And uh, you can navigate places. Ever since COVID hit, people want to see places before they go there and know what it's going to be like. Uh, one of the uh, benefits of the service that we provide is that you essentially get two versions of a 360 tour. So you get a fully interactive version that you can embed on a website, share on social media, whatever. But I'll take those same 360 images and I also sync them to Google Street View. The two main benefits and are that number one, people are going to engage on your site for a longer period of time, which increases your search engine optimization and it really shows off you know everything uh, and then with it those assets also being tied to the Google listing for those particular places it also increases their ranking in local search results um, this uh, project uh, as you've seen in the proposal uh, would you would essentially be able to walk all of the entire river walk uh, there's another one there for downtown you'd be able to walk down up and down both sides of the streets and uh, also the Village of the Arts. Um, now the content that would be interactive would be provided by the CRA or the city um, or we could help further with that if needed but the point is is that we can take any content so and each of those businesses in the Village of the Arts it could link to their Facebook and website pop them open in another window uh, like I said, pretty much uh, imagination's the limit on what you would want it to do. Um, from that side of it, does anyone have any questions on how it works or what it can do? Um, is there uh, music played with this, or is that an option? Yes, uh, we can use royalty-free music. I have a music, right? We right. Yeah, I have access to about a hundred thousand songs I can use. <laughs> I'll narrow it down for you to some choices. <laughs> it works on cell phones, any device. You don't need any special software. It runs right in a browser. So if somebody's downtown out of San Diego and says, where's this river walk go? Can you pull it up on an app and get a guiding? You don't even need an app. It just works right in your browser, right on your phone. Mm -hmm. Right on your browser. Yep. So uh, would it be a, an app that we could develop? Assess City of Bradenton or whatever, CRA, whatever it is. If you wanted to make it into an app, uh, it would not be difficult. It's basically just embedded content. So if you created a web-based app that could have embedded HTML content, it could be part of a standalone app on so if iOS. We just or having an event like the Regatta or some music event downtown, we could say, go see who this who you're going to see this weekend at Friday at whatever and you could get probably a video clip from the uh, promoter or the uh, uh, band, that, which they have, uh, load it into there and get like a sneak preview to get you a little flavor and get you going and get you downtown. Yes, sir. Sounds great to me. Uh, Jane? Um, and boy, am I really going to show how untechy I am. <laughs> but do you have the capability with the goggles now with this too? Yes, it does work with virtual reality glasses Thank and Google you. Cardboard. <laughs> so someone could look at this 
With, it actually works with your cell phone. It'll actually work with the accelerometer. So you can look around like as you're holding it, it will move just like you're looking that direction and it'll show you that direction. You look in that direction, it'll show you that direction. People are very familiar with this because real estate now we have, I have these on my listings and, and I mean, you could get promotional VR because they have some cheap ones. And I mean, I think, I think it's going to be great. Uh, also, this favor. would include each of these uh, would include a number of aerial shots where you can do bird's eye views in 360, where you can look in every direction. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> you're moving too fast. Well, yeah, now now is when I do start getting motion sickness. <laughs> Dude, chill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's awesome. I I think it's great. Thank you. Is there an annual maintenance or update to this? Yes, sir. So uh, that would be three hundred dollars a year per project. Per project. So yes, you sir. Suggested, and uh, yeah, three CRAs or whatever. So it's per project, and that's it's like, for example, I just mentioned that the uh, um, yeah, if you had those five or six events downtown of that, so would that be that would be included in that? I mean, what's you you can't just say uh, you just call me any time and put anything you want because you're not. You, well, actually, that's basically what it is. Any links you want to update, that's what you're getting for that maintenance. Really, that's cool. uh, so any links or anything you want to change as far as the interactivity goes. And also, if a certain spot, like say they repainted a building and wanted to update one of the images, I'll uh, include up to two images per month to reshoot. Like even our ball games in the spring, that we could say the Yankees are playing this weekend, bam, hit that, and then Ooh. here's the ticket prices. Yeah, that's excellent. Absolutely, I like it. I like it too. 21st century. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to make a motion to authorize CRA staff to engage with city staff and access 360 media and negotiate and execute a contract for the purposes of creating virtual tours and capturing images for the Riverwalk downtown core and Village of the Arts areas for up to why didn't we just do $2,300, people? $23,000. Or, I'm sorry, $23,000 rather than $22,990? Seriously? For all three areas? Just as long as you don't make me have to zoom around like that again, I'm good. I the total for all three was $20,900. It was, and it says plus minus 10%, so I just wanted to. Okay. okay. You like details? I um, gave you details. <laughs> <laughs> it's based on the number of scenes that are shot. For, for instance, they wanted to add more scenes. If it, you know, a certain window, no problem, but like plus or minus 10%. Okay. They said, hey, can we make this way more detailed? Do you live here in Brady? Yes, sir. Congratulations. It's 2015. Okay. Um, We've got mo a motion and a second. Mo motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? I mean, Katarina, are you keeping a, a tally of uh, this money we're spending? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we over budget. We're good. We're good. What? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Oh, this is a very second. Um, Nicely done, done, gentlemen. Thank you. Who seconded that? Bill. I did. Thank you. You did. Okay, moving right along. Do you need to take a break before this? CRA board meeting schedule for reminder of calendar, remainder of calendar year. I thought we already did that. We seem to be doing it. I actually want to give you an updated um, calendar. <coughs> I got so many calendars, I can't keep open. You have to have a calendar for the calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is yes. different from what I have. Yes, <laughs> she said it's oh. exciting. I don't see the difference between what you gave me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, a new version, but I think oh. some of my earlier ones. Is there not an app or or some kind of software where Everybody can put their what they can and can't do, and then it puts it together. The doodle. Yeah, yeah I, because I, I get a little confused on some of this, and I just want to start out by saying I have 
a board meeting from 12 to 1 on the third Wednesday of every month. So if we could avoid that, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I got one more year. <laughs> one more year. Oh, you had two years? Uh-huh. It's a two-year thing. Mm -hmm. That's good to be on that board. That's a, that would do a lot of good for our community. I think so. Yeah, this, yeah. we just witnessed, what, $400,000 given out to various charities, including our police department. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think when I first came in, they gave away like 800000 I don't know what that is. That's a great organization. Is. So You're probably not supposed to be talking. So I yeah. But I understand other it people have. Money, I can't, I can't Thanks. keep my mouth shut. Yeah. So as I mentioned to you during our one-on-ones, I reached out after you asked me to find out potential alternatives, reached out to METV for their availability. Um, and they're, they're available on Wednesdays um, and potentially Fridays. Wednesdays was their first choice. Um, so based on that information, I went back and I looked at the other different Wednesdays that potentially it could happen. Um, and those are shown as yellow on, on, on the paper you have in front of you. Since during our one-on-ones, um, just wanted to caution you for July the 13th does not seem to be available and the 27th. So I would actually recommend for July if we can <coughs> keep it the same, uh, potentially if you wanted to make it a different time, a little bit later. Um, I think that might be wise, uh, particularly on the dates that are the months we only have one meeting date. Those those meetings tend to go longer than usual. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, uh, that's I. I just wanted you to kind of see the different well, dates. In August, we will require two meetings. Right now, we only have one scheduled on the 24th because of the bud. We 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 need to pass our budget. So that it can be included with the with the city's budget and their notification, um, but uh, we could do either the tenth and the twenty fourth or the seventeenth and the thirty first. I just wanted to give you some options for your discussion. As in the November and December, the city only has one meeting, so I didn't know again. Did you want to tag on to that or choose a different date? If if I could just ask that. We do that. We maybe either do. The only the only question I have too is it seems like whenever we need a, a workshop, it always goes to that third Wednesday. So um, I don't know. I, I spoke to the mayor um, to see if that would be a conflict, and mm -hmm. he was gracious that he say that he could schedule the workshops around our meetings. Okay. Okay. Then if I could just ask when it when we're having these meetings. On the third Wednesday, if we could either have it first thing in the morning or after 1.30, or start at 1.30. That's all I'd ask. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking when we get to the point where we're only having one city council meeting, those meetings are going to get filled quickly. Mm -hmm. And to have a, a 1.15 start time is not going to be practical. Well, there's not a city. I don't think there's a city meeting on that day. On the 24th? Is there? Yeah, I yes. thought that was black. Yeah, well, the, I thought black meant there was a city meeting. In addition to, so on August, in August, they have two meetings, two meetings, August 10th and the 24th, but ours is only on oh. the 24th. Oh, boy. Uh, tell me when you want to meet and I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Second. What about going to the first Wednesdays? I'm, it sounds like I'm going to have a problem anyway. It sounds like, yeah. Do you want to go month by month and choose different dates? It doesn't know. It, or I, I'm not I, comfortable choosing different days when you're trying to schedule these things because Wednesday consistency, okay, yeah. consistency is a, a good thing when you're talking about. Yeah. Well, what is the first Wednesday of the wait, month? Wait, wait, I'm sorry. No. Um, uh, Ms. Singer informed me that the third Thursdays, uh, third Wednesdays, there's planning commission meeting, so we wouldn't. At two. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we could still do it in the morning. Regular CRA meetings for June and July were changed, and so we switched the planning commission. So if you're only talking about June and July, that's fine. But if in the future uh, you want to go to third Wednesday, that's fine as long as it's in the morning. Um, two o'clock is when planning commission starts. So thank you. 
can't happen. Well, it sounds like we have two issues here. One is um, next and it and we only having one city council meeting in June. So we decided we moved, on? It, okay. we, we moved it from it used to be July and August and we moved it to June and July. Okay. All right. I understand now. Thank you. Perhaps well, I don't know. I was just going to say perhaps we should look at scheduling our CRA meetings starting at 3:30 or 4 on the days that you've got council meetings so that we make sure that we finish the council meeting and can have a break for lunch so that we're not having to have people pick up food and bring it to us and choke it down as fast as we did today. How's that? Long day for staff. I'm sorry? No, I was just saying long day for staff. We're here uh, to serve. Yeah, so. You are, you are. Yeah. Well, just schedule it. Give me a heads up and I'll be here. So, okay, just so well, I'm understanding. So we need to have well, two there's meetings. Times when somebody can't meet. That's, well, you're not going to okay. find that we can all meet. So I'm, you just have to be excused if you got something work related. That's all I say. Well, so basically it's Wednesday or forget it. <laughs> well, we do that because of the main reasons because of the yeah. cost and expense of the BTV. And they, then, then if we start changing the date and times, now we have to get their approval because they've got already pre-scheduled stuff with mm -hmm. one you know they're all over town so we don't if we start dragging them into it we'll be here for two weeks trying to figure this out there will and thank you i forgot to mention there will be an additional cost if we move to a different date right. which will be approximate time too, approximately seven hundred dollars or so right. per meeting if we move it to a different day than the city council meeting well and 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 I've spoke to the city administrator about how on days that they know when we have a second meeting um, that they can I'm not sure. add stupid stuff that drives a meeting on. And uh, I brought it up to the mayor today and he was told not his problem. So I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't have, I'll be here whenever you guys want. This is, we, we're, we're, we keep, we keep coming back to this, and it's like, I'll be here. <laughs> I will too. Okay, my question is, why not the first mo Wednesday of the month? What's the conflict there? $700 every time. What? I can't. $700 every time. Well, it's, it's going to be. <laughs> well, for June, we wouldn't have time for June cost. only, though. Pardon? If it's different than the council meeting, it's going to cost us. Well, they're all going to cost us. Well, they, I mean, cost us more. They have and there's possible conflict. It's set up in time. Well, how about we we already have council and CRA on the same Wednesday. Maybe council meetings because they know because CRA is time certain one fifteen. Then council meeting if it's not finished, you still we still stop at some certain time. That, so do we have time to we grab a bite to eat? Relax and what have you. Yeah, on like those relax. Days that we have the but council and CRA, yeah. and we then we'll be yes, back here. And after then, that. unfortunately, though, after we'll CRA here. meeting, mm -hmm. we finish up. But hope. Well, I'm, I guess I'm being uh, hopeful that the city council meetings aren't going to always be five hours or four hours. We can we can be a little more efficient. Um. And we used to do it that way, by the way, <laughs> I think a, long I heard a long time ago. Well, and then the, the we've got to do something so at least we have 30 minutes. You know, I, I work for the school district. My lunch is 30 minutes. I'm used to that, but not cool when it's 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, if we had uh, an evening meeting for the council and the CRA, we'd avoid all these uh, conflicts. <laughs> Sorry. We'd run into the same thing with METV, though. Well, it, it's subject to their uh, what they have available, but they, they're going to have more available in the evening hours than they are in the daytime hours. How, how late can you guys stay with us? You stay, the county commissioners would have all day meetings. We do do a lot of nighttime events, so kind of, <coughs> you know, it takes place, but it is normally on a not all Wednesday. Um, that seems to be our. So if you have.
had a Wednesday from yeah. five to whatever, you'd be available. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you'd have to I know you have to check it, but it's more likely it would be. Well, uh, I'm thinking no, not go beyond five. <laughs> I, I just do that. Answer. Well, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I guess I'm. I understand seven hundred dollars. Nobody wants to spend more money, but I think our efficiency. <laughs> I think yeah, at this point, we really lose, you know. That's why I don't like this, just ramrodding everything into one day. Just saying. I believe city council meetings could be more efficiently run when on days that they know that we have a meeting. But mm -hmm. I don't believe there's a desire. Great. I'm not sure. Well, I think the council start that. may not hear, but the council can vote on that because it's a council meeting. Yeah. I think we have a say on time sensitive on the CRA dates if we want to vote on it. I also think if we started our meeting perhaps at 2.30 or 3, it would be better on the same date, but just be able to finish the city's business as far as city council is concerned, make sure that we have an opportunity to check messages and emails and take a little bit of a, a lunch break and then be back refreshed, ready to go. Just personally, I think three is late because sometimes these meetings do go also two hours, three hours. Um, so two o'clock, 2.30 at the latest, that's my I'm fine with that. Final offer. <laughs> to move the start time to 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock? At least that gives us. If we move it to 2 o'clock, it gives us an extra 45 minutes. That would probably do it. But council just can't go. Then that doesn't give council. I'm telling you, I, I made myself clear. You all, you all are council people. <laughs> if you have the same desire that I do, that when the count, when, when, when the city knows that we have another meeting and we want to, we, we don't need to waste time on presentations or stuff like that, that they can streamline, they can move quickly when they want to, that if we all ask for it, we will receive it. If it's just one of us saying it, it Well, and if we all did our homework before the meetings, that could streamline the meetings too. I agree. So, Mr. Chairman, would you like a motion that we move the start time for the CRA meetings from 1.15 to 2 o'clock? That sounds like a reasonable motion. Well, that's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 No. <laughs> Whatever. Well, it's just 45 minutes. I mean, let's, oh, that's let's a long just, time. Let's just well, whatever. Let's just try. Whatever. It doesn't so work. I'm a caregiver. That's all I'm saying. I've been there. But hey, so I'm so I'll work it out. So is it four one? Is that the yeah. yes? <laughs> we will readver we will readvertise it on the paper that for the rest of the year will be two p.m. Okay. Humor okay, ideas. Central CRA District, follow-up discussion for Tom Hall meeting, the directions of the uh, Mini Rogers, directions for Mini Rogers. Um, there was a town hall meeting um, in the Central CRA that was uh, very successful, well attended, great feedback from the community. So again, I want to thank um, the community for coming out um, and just giving us some positive feedback and some ideas on how to proceed. The main topic was the Minnie Rogers property and um, what I at least heard from the vast majority of the community was that because of Miller's Market opening up soon that they felt that that will take care of the the fresh produce and the meat for and th that they, they were not as they didn't demand that, you know, there was no um, going forward for a grocery store for us, just like we had heard the feedback 10, 15 years ago that they wanted a grocery store. Some ideas that they offered were um, a family dollar, um, 
the Walgreens and potentially have space for entrepreneurs um, and individual type of shops. So in addition to that feedback, um, the developer is, um, is working with planning to submit site plans and request special use for the property. So, and based on our contract, they have until the end of this year to get that finalized. So for the timing of everything, I thought it was important that we come together to discuss your, you know, what did you take from the town hall meeting, from the residents that were there, as well as your um, desire on how to move forward. Um, we have uh, uh, Peter Diario Jr. here with us. Um, he would like to update us on, um, on what they have been doing since then. And he's here also to hear back your feedback. So if you'd like. If you're wondering why I look 25 years <laughs> younger, <laughs> it's the haircut. Yeah. He sounds just like him. No, I'm, I'm here to uh, represent my father. And uh, he's currently in Las Vegas uh, at a real estate convention speaking with some of these uh, companies. Um, that's why I'm, I'm here instead. Um, Hopefully you still have a company when he's done. Right, right. I, I'll do my best. Uh, I do live in St. Petersburg, but I do work in uh, Bradenton. Okay. So I'm familiar with the area. I'm here all the time. Uh, but the uh, CRA advisory board was very enlightening uh, to see the, the change in what people thought, and we heard that. Um, family dollars, super cuts, other small uh, local retail makes a lot of sense so we're going to continue to head in that direction um mcdonald's is still a go we're still in agreement um there is a, a site plan that needs to be done for that to continue uh if we I recall there is a uh, conceptual planned uh, deadline on june 7th that we're going to be preparing for that's what mcdonald's needs and that's what uh the board needs as well. So that's what we're pushing for. I do have an update on Aldi. We discussed in Las Vegas, they're not gonna pursue the property. So while you know we tried a little bit there, it doesn't look like we're heading that direction anyway, but that is the update with Aldi. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, after the permit is, the special permit is prepared, uh, we'll be back and continue for approval. That's all I have. Good. Okay. Any and questions? Thank you. I feel, yeah, I mean, there might be some questions, so I would like if you can stay so that we can, um, I mean, and, and I want to bring also Mrs. Singer potentially to talk to us about those timelines, kind of what has been submitted, and if you need any guidance from us as of now. Um, whatever you all want, Chair. Come on down. talk about things? I, well, I, I think um, developers should be a little uh, more at ease because that takes some of the pressure off and then you can be a little more creative. Um, but I am also extremely interested in finding out where we are with McDonald's. Um, but I had, a, I, I had a thought too. We have someone that's doing some research or, or collecting data for us. And I forgot the name. Actually, it's Business Flair. And Business we have Flair. Mr. Altman is here because he, he and I was going to leave that for later, um, because oh. they're, um, looks familiar. Okay. They, they're almost ready with the presentation. So I was going to give an update. And he wanted oh. to come here and, and listen and be ready for some of your questions on the market research. So that's. So he's here if you have any questions okay, for Well, him. I guess I'm kind of jumping the gun, but when he comes up, maybe we can also take a look at what um, data is out there to tell us what might be good to work with that site. Um, you know, would, would a, a super cuts or, or what have you, you know, what, <coughs> you know, I'm sure your data could kind of give us a, a, an idea. 
Um, <laughs> but okay, that was all I wanted to say. Sorry. Voice is much better today. Um, in terms of the process, uh, as you know, we um, changed the future land use designation to one that would allow for drive-throughs on the site. Um, kind of uh, pulled the one up from the south um, to cover this property. It's still within the form base code, though. So. Um, what they'll need is a special use approval from City Council to allow for a drive-through. Um, and they'll also need a form-based code review, uh, and together with that comes um, possible adjustments, likely adjustments, um, from setback requirements and those sorts of things. Uh, one of the things we've discussed is the proposal included a configuration uh, that essentially put the long side towards First Avenue and as the front towards um, the side street or is that um, 13th? 13th. 13th. Um, and we had some concerns about that. You know, generally, typically speaking, your McDonald's is going to have a lot of its glass storefront uh, along the front of it, and we'd prefer that that be facing um, uh, First Street. Um, I know, you know, there's, there's still going to be pedestrian activity coming to the site, despite the fact <coughs> that that first street is a very busy road. And I think when you look at the aspirational plans that are contained within the form base code, uh, it included almost like a little community gathering spot at the corner there, kind of reminiscent of what they expected, you know, that the site had a bigger, um, aspirational requirement than that was just where it was located. It had to do with the history of the site and, and Tim Polk's uh, view of what should be happening on that site. So we were kind of hoping at a minimum uh, if we can get them, and I don't know what plans they're going to submit ultimately, but at a minimum we were hoping to get them to turn it 90 degrees so that the front is facing onto First Street. And that, you know, we we kind of, you know, we're capitulating a little bit. We're probably going to be looking at adjustments because of the drive-through, and that's going to surround, you know, the property. They're going to have to come in through the back and, and totally go around that. But we're going to look for as much as we can in terms of landscaping and, and plaza situations at the front there and a safe pedestrian <laughs> access to the site and to the business. Um, we haven't seen any... Um, anything definitive in terms of the other buildings on the site. I think they, they talked about medical slash commercial component that would be pushed back towards the railroad tracks uh, rather than addressing the street. We'd like them to address the street as much as possible. Uh, we understand that the location of the McDonald's may preclude some of what we're hoping for. Um, but I'm interested to hear your perspective on that. If you think that we're pushing too hard on something that was, you know, just not going to happen, um, you know, I'd rather hear that now because uh, that can help guide my um, decisions in terms of approving adjustments and considering how far we push and how hard we push on the configuration of the, the buildings on the site, so. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, with regard to the, um, the, the, the glass frontage on first, is that just purely an aesthetic thing or is there a, a principle? A it's, logic it's an behind aesthetic it? thing. I think it's also a safety thing. Uh, when police are driving by, you know, being able to see into the building and see into the site in the evening hours, I think the presentation of commercial frontage, I think the light and the perception of surveillance that that puts out under the, the public streets, I think that's all helpful. Uh, that's sort of septed requirements. Um, I think, you know, in terms of encouraging pedestrian activity and making this seem more like a neighborhood. Um, a spot as opposed to you know just a McDonald's that's kind of see that they really lose it with it facing 13th though yeah um, the cars are going so fast on first that I don't know I well, it's a spotlight right there though so it's gonna be some pause but I, I just I just don't know that I see that we're getting so much benefit mm -hmm. out of having it face the first as opposed to 13th I don't know. I, I just don't see that as a big emphasis since you're asking for our opinions. Yeah. But the uh, question, other question I had was, um, did I hear someone at one of these meetings talk about they're going to come and ask for additional ingress, egress on to 1st? Or is everything going on to 13th? Or uh, we don't I, know at this point. It would have to be a right in, right out off of 1st, I would imagine. And over near the railroad tracks, at least the plans that I've seen depict something along those lines. Um, but a lot remains to be seen because you're going to have to have a decel lane if you're going to do 
anything fancy out there. So that to me is more important than yeah. <laughs> having the glass facing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want you want ingress and egress off of first. I don't or know. I don't know what I want, but okay. I just know I just would think that in terms of priorities of where we need to be yeah is whatever they tell us is going to be the safest cuz that's yeah. public safety to me. Yeah. Aesthetics, I want it to look good, but you know, maybe we have a nice landscaping. I don't know. I don't know, but the more important thing to me would be is if they're wanting changes with that ingress egress mm -hmm. that we focus on that rather than mm -hmm. what's facing what. <clears throat> okay. That's just my opinion. The only thing I would say, I think he's trying to get uh, pre-approval from FDOT to have a, a right in and a right out onto first. 301, 301 and because the traffic's, and so I think McDonald's also wants that, but, and so the glass on the side, I don't know about that, if that's just cosmetic, because the, the, that wouldn't change the drive through, wouldn't it? Would it? Because he, yeah. there's a certain way you got to come in and go out. Yeah, so. you, still, you still have to, they usually do the double <coughs> drive through, and you're still going to come in from that side. And from the other around. side. Yeah. And, and so yeah. that's just aesthetics more than, mm -hmm. and like say, police to view in there. That, yeah. that, I, I don't know. That's, that's probably something that they could address, I would say. And is there also going to be an entrance on off of 13th, like closer uh -huh. to Third Street? Well, everything we've seen drawn seemed like it did, That's but right. you know, yeah. that seems better to me because then people aren't <coughs> driving straight out on the first. They'll yeah. go and then they get the light. Right. I, I like that better. better. Yeah. Understand. Well, you and you need you need, you need to, to ingress and egress yeah. on the site, so they'll 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 be on both. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, Miss Barmy. Thank you. Um, with regards to McDonald's, I'm pretty sure McDonald's has enough money in the wherewithal. They've probably got 874 store designs <laughs> based on different countries and different states and different lighting requirements and, and different motifs and different architectural uh, wingdings, whatever you want to call them. So what I would say is we want to have the prettiest, the best, the safest, and the easiest to access McDonald's that you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. If you're asking Asheville for my was endpoint. Asheville pretty when I went by that one. Pardon me? Asheville. <laughs> well, yes, Asheville. The address, Ash no. <laughs> Asheville has, they have a very, they have a very strong sign ordinance near the Biltmore Estates. Mm -hmm. They have yeah, very yeah. strong <laughs> architectural requirements because of the Biltmore Estates. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, I would prefer not to have a, you know, cookie cutter. Oh, this, this is the, this is the, you know, whatever view seven subsection C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done this one before kind of thing. I'd prefer yeah. that they look at it and that it's done in a way that it's going to be an enhancement to our community. That's why if they want to, you know, face the glass on 13th, I'm okay. And let's get them, let's get out of them mm -hmm. a better looking neighborhood yeah. style. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're when front I elevation. Of, when I think of the side facing ones, I think of the one on 75th and Cortez or the one on about, it's a little past 59th on Manatee. Um, those are other examples of sort of side facing McDonald's. Um, oh, but, yeah. Again. I mean, this yeah. this was we want an something better. So. We want something spectacular. Mm. <laughs> this is an underserved area that's been underserved forever and a day, and this is going to be named after one of uh, an amazing woman in the African American community that did so much for this community. And if I hear one more comment about Mil Minnie Rogers, I'm not sure who she was. I will lose it. Well, don't lose it because a lot of people don't know. Because a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of a lot of, lot of our age people <laughs> aren't around. <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> it it so, it's so don't let it don't let it upset you. Just do it. <laughs> this this is something that we have talked about forever. Yes, trying to have. get something done. I want it to be something that everyone in the community will be proud of. Well, that may be something we can take to the community again, too. Well, just, again, I, I just don't want to, you know, style number two, subsection B, Jane. Is this cool? No, oh. yeah, so. yeah, I do. 
Uh, I'm looking around the room, and I, I don't see very many people that was here with a Dunkin' Donuts came into my neighborhood, and a Mr. Harold Bird was pretty adamant about it being designed to the old historic area of uh, Angola and the history museum across the street. And we thought they were going to come back with a totally different design. And today it's there as a cookie cutter Dunkin' Donuts that's on every corner in the country. And so uh, I don't disagree with you, but that's not been our experience. And I'm sorry you brought up a sore subject because that's still a sore subject with me. Mm -hmm. oh, they I think that was it now that I looked at it again. Yeah. From the inside, I remember the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm just, I just keep thinking Mrs. Coachman's comments, and I'm thinking of the contract we have with Business Flair. Um, is that an opportunity? Is that a desire for us to do anything to look into it more? Or you guys want to go with the recommendations that they gave? Or do you want us to see what's best use from... Uh, how do you want us to go about it? I guess, I guess what I'm thinking is, you know, how best it is to... How best to use what we'll have <coughs> left, at, you know, once McDonald's is in place. Um, you know, what's really best for that area now? <coughs> um, okay, because we can, we can keep talking about 20 years ago, but like now, right to this point now, the grocery store isn't a major thing. So what will best benefit the area, not just the neighborhood, because more than the neighborhood will be using this, uh, <coughs> but what would fit best in that area uh, Peter, currently. You Thank you. Uh, for the record, Peter Altman with Business Flair. And um, first thing I want <coughs> to say is the, the data that you've been waiting for, which is in its final stages, um, certainly we want to preview that if we can, and we intend to if it works on the, six, on the uh, June meeting at 2 o'clock um, to be able to present uh, publicly. Um, and, and your conversation about what would be best, <coughs> both aesthetically as well as for the benefit of the people who live there, really can be helped to be informed and perhaps the developer, if willing, because I, I understand you've got legal issues and time constraints that are here, but, but we are prepared uh, and it's a part of our contract to be able to provide these services uh, to use the data that we've been paying for, that we've collected, that gives, um, for example, placer information. What are people, uh, who lives there, what are they, how are they working, what are they buying when they leave that they don't have? So we have the ability to give you a better sense of uh, what is desired by the community, <coughs> as well as <coughs> on staff we have design folks who've, who've done some great <coughs> urban design. Uh, last night I heard a presentation on what's called uh, hip hop new urbanism. So there's, <coughs> there is a recognition of the activity that goes on and the use of the local community to be uh, really become part of. So does that mean uh, potentially the outcome could be small businesses that could help uh, in an entrepreneurial way. Uh, how much space is there? What would happen with it? So all of what you've said, we would be happy to uh, provide uh, within the time frame, and, and it's already in our services uh, agreement. So two things. I, I look forward to sharing what we've learned about who lives here, where they work, uh, who comes here, what time do they shop, what do they buy, and what's happening in the real estate market, and all of those factors that I think uh, we have in an interactive uh, uh, facility that we can keep updated and keep you abreast of, which is our desire. And I'm excited because this is uh, really a, an opportunity for us to show the kind of work that's been going on on the East Coast in the Miami area that uh, are products that really aren't 
uh, aren't really being considered or used here. So I look forward to the opportunity to visit with you before the 15th, but also to work with Katarina, and if it's acceptable with the developer mm -hmm. and our staff, uh, to be able to come up with at least some thoughts and share in this dialogue with you. Great. Great, Peter. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Ms. Barnaby, <coughs> I have, I'm, I'm, I hope it's okay to say this. After that meeting, I was bombarded with a lot of people that wanted to know when did we name that site Minnie Rogers. And there are people my age. Um, so I think there's going to have to be some history lessons. Um, you know, I knew the woman. On. <laughs> I, knew, I knew of her. I knew of the Rogers family. Grew up with um, some of her grandchildren and all that. But um, yeah, we've got to do some history lessons. Um, my, my only thinking on this is as we move forward, I know we keep running into like form based code issues and um, I think we just have to recognize this is this has turned out to be an irregular property mm -hmm. in a very difficult corner and we're trying to uh, ha get some very specific needs. So I, I just think that as far as a, a city, we need to be more nimble that this might not be a form based code textbook case right. that we might have to keep modifying it well, just to right. see what we get. We agreed to that. I, I know. Well I'm just saying it, it just the questions came up that I, I right. think we may have to we may continue to have to do that. Well, I think we do. And I wasn't aware of the deadline of June seventh, so I'm just trying to think in my head our next meeting is on the fifteenth. So is there any any further guidance to give to the developer on what to submit or, but we still don't have any market data of what potentially we might want to, I'm just trying to think in my head, how do we coordinate all the dates and everything? Um, is it once a month that the deadline is or is it for the DRC or? Uh, yeah. DRC, but they're they're going to first apply for um, the special use permit, and at the same time, we'll probably conduct a uh, form-based code review, and we can be looking at the <coughs> adjustments at the same time that the special use is uh, processed. So that you know, we'd meet with the DRC, uh, we give them a list of comments, and and that's sort of their pre-app for their special use. Then they go forward to the planning commission, and the following month they come to city council. So you're talking about a, a about a three-month process and you to get through that. By June seventh. Well, that, that, is that the deadline that he mentioned? Yeah, so that's the application. Sorry, that I think to get in front of the DRC. Yeah. yeah, that's the application. Okay. So would your recommendation be that they apply for something, knowing that on June fifteenth um, we're gonna have another meeting um, and Mr. Altman do you think between now and June 15th you may be able to give us with some best uses for the property and stuff so at that meeting we're going to have much more for our board to discuss yeah. so uh, should they go ahead and apply and then revise it well, or how? Yeah the special use that they're going for is just for the McDonald's. Oh okay. The McDonald's drive through okay. it's not for the design it's not for of the, the entire whole site. site plan. And okay. he's, he's shown us some plans and diagrams showing the rest of it and and I think he does want to kind of usher that through but that's between him and this, okay. the, you all okay. what you're going to approve okay. now I don't I don't know what kind of process you have embedded in terms of what you have to authorize for the rest of the site and if that involves us or not I just know that we're processing the buildings through per the code um, as the applications come in so if, if he applies for other buildings we'll look at those he does not, we, we can't, and we'll just process through the special use. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I think, yeah, we'll give you definitely more information. I do believe, if I recall, the contract spoke about a site plan for the whole site, and that was my concern about the deadlines and trying to keep the process going because I want to be of help so that we meet their timelines and their needs also. So we'll bring you some more information at the next meeting. Okay. 
All right, moving on to the last item, uh, community events at MLK Junior Park and Love Park. Just a quick update again that we are going to be hosting two public meetings, one on June 2nd at the MLK Junior <coughs> Park at 6 p.m. Um, we want the community to be engaged, to give us their ideas about what amenities, um, how they would like their park to look like and feel like when they're using it. Um, there will be hot dogs and drinks for anybody that comes and participates in, in this type of meeting. Um, and then and the next meeting is going to be on June 7th at Love Park, also at 6 p.m. Uh, public Works will be there, police will be there, uh, we will be there. And uh, we're also sending the flyer out to all the surrounding areas so that they are aware of these events. <coughs> okay. It just was uh, no, Bill, we're going to drag this on for another hour just to, just to expose you to every bug in the city of Braden. It's surrounded and it's starting to flow. We're second it. My medicine ran off. Well, All right, that's a motion and a second. All in favor, cough. Aye. 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 I'm telling you, it sounded like a TV warden here. I know, I was thinking it's like the same thing. It's like a sanitarium thing. or something. I, I want, I want to <laughs> the Lysol.